The podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. Make some of this play go. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. And welcome to the podcast on Haunted Hill, episode 135. My name is Gav. My name is Dan. We are your Easter egg specialist hunters. We go in the woods and find the special Easter eggs, the ones you don't want to find. We're your Easter bunnies with our little fluffy cotton tails. And we hop all over the woodland area. We're your spring lambs. We do little wooden poops. Okay. Anyway, happy Easter. Happy Easter! It's an Easter episode. It is. Now, ladies and gentlemen, does it sound different to you? Mm. Do you know why? Why does it sound different? Daniel and myself are together podcasting in the same room for the first time in, what? Almost five years. (laughs) We're together. To prove it, we've done it before, we'll do it again. High five. That was a real one. How's it going, everybody? Hello everyone. Happy Easter to you all. Happy spring. Happy zombie Jesus. It's that time of the year where the, for some countries the clocks change, it gets lighter, a little bit warmer, a bit drier. And uh, for the last few years... Spring is in the air. Spring is in the air. As, as love might say. be. Uh, and since we've begun actually, we've always done or tried to do an Easter special. Um, and that's got harder to do every year as we've run out of horror movies or movies that have eggs in them. We started with exactly. Uh, we started with the alien movies. I just did the first egg joke. We, you did. Of the episode. I just got that. You know, the joke was on me. I mean, the joke was on me for not yeah, getting indeed, that. Indeed. Um, but a couple of years ago, we decided. Well, look, St Patrick's Day falls around spring, Easter, March, April. Let's uh, let's have a little look at these. Uh, this leprechaun franchise, Gav, didn't Fuck we? me. Out of any episode, like, the amount of times Dan and I have had conversations and ended up going down these deep, like, massive holes talking about, even, you could even arguably say intelligent conversations uh, with each arguably. other. Arguably. With each other, uh, with some amazing films. It happens to be when we're actually together, when we can actually look at each other and actually have the conversation without a fucking glitch in the internet. We're talking fucking Leprechaun 5, where time stopped. While I watched it. So, for episode 135, our Easter special, we are covering Leprechaun 5, Leprechaun in the Hood. <laughs> Motherfuckers. With Ice T, who says that word quite a lot. And uh, we're pairing it up with the follow up Leprechaun, Leprechaun 6, 6, Back to the Hood. T H A, that is spelt Back to the Hood. Didn't want to step on the toes of the other producers. But, uh, yeah. I would have gone back to the Hood, would have been better. Could have brought Ice Cube back. Could have brought Ice Cube back. But we'll get into all of that. So that's what we're covering. Double Warwick Davis Bill. Weirdly, I would have done B A K number two, uh, D A Woods. The uh, hood. They could have turned it into back to the woods. Back to the hood. They could have turned it into like a Fast and Furious That'd movie. That well. looked kind of loads better. I don't know what it was, but it wasn't that. Leprechaun Six. Too lucky. Too short. Oh, fuck. It would have been... Uh, but well, yes... Warwick just racing around really fast cars with a really little Vin Diesel. Played by Mini-Me. Amazing. Because he looks like a mini little Vin Diesel. He has he? passed away. Up there, I know. Rest in peace, Mini-Me. Mm-hmm. Troy Vern. I think that was his but, name. But, yeah. Um, short-lived. Uh, sorry! No! Don't do it, Dan. Anyway... Anyway, we're here for that, so that's you, what we're here you for. You know what we're doing. We're doing some... Well, there'll be some terrible Easter puns thrown in. Like the one that Gav made earlier. It's the same gag every time. It is the same. I can't actually get anything better than that, no, to be honest no. with you. Don't worry about it. Um, and, yeah, so that's what we're doing. We're, we're together. We're very excited. I'm looking into Gav's eyes as we talk now, which is fantastic. Uh, we're, in, we're in Gav's... Me, uh, first time it, I, did. This is the first time I've been in Gav's uh, place as well. I'm also... Let's talk about 
Mm-hmm. Why, another reason I'm here this weekend, briefly, mm. as well. Yeah, if our throats uh, sound a little bit sore, um, mm. it's because we've just done two days outside working very hard uh, on a little special project. A 14-hour day followed by a 13-hour day, which finished at 1am in the middle of the woods. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've finally got started on our Kickstarter project, Star Wars Sanctuary Moon. Yep. Um, we'll probably talk more about this on our next episode, but we are still buzzing off the back of mm. what our incredible team family in fact of people have, have put together mm. we we are very blessed to know such talented it, it, it people it was weirdly quite professional it was Fucking costume tents and catering tables and locations and walkie talkies and it's just an, an incredible experience all around and mm. oh, it was very we're getting to it we're yeah, getting to we'll, we'll talk more about it yeah. um, in the next um, but, episode. but <laughs> that's why Dan's here because we want to do that but we thought let's bank a couple episodes we're actually going to record yes. two episodes today because um, we've done also Dan's birthday episode yes, which, be next which, time, which will be, be cool. our following episode um, so that's why my throat is going to be sounding a little uh, a little bit cold and a little bit sorry yeah. um, just we're not, a bit achy not that I shout at my cast and crew <laughs> they'd be crying <laughs> um, anyway. anytime he did now hang on anytime he did shout he immediately apologised <laughs> he said right we need to get this shot I'm really sorry for being so bossy Immediately towards the end of the day, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought, bless him. Yeah, but he needed to be bossy sometimes because sometimes we just flap about. But yes, so that's why we're here. But listen, that's enough of that. News updates, life events. What have we been watching? Let's do all of that now. I've got one thing to kick things off. It's a follow up to our last episode, which was a patron special. It was Kevin S. Fife's patron picks, uh, and he picked uh, the legacy and the changeling, which we reviewed, we covered, we loved. Um, he's messaged me and said I can read out his message just as a follow-up to that. So oh, he, that's, that's really cool. Thanks, Kev. Cool. Yeah, thank you. He says, um, I listened to the podcast, fellas. Excellent. I'm very happy that you enjoyed the movies, both of them. Yes, it does seem like we have a similar story down with your mum and my dad. My dad is actually cremated and in the urn in the living room, so when I'm watching horror movies, I still actually talk to him. <laughs> he says, if I jump, I look over at him and say, oh... Okay, that one got me, Dad. Lol. I loved I loved on the episode... That, that is ba- so sweet. It is sweet, isn't it? He said, I loved on the episode that he basically broke down the legacy to a devil-worshipping pyramid scheme. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said, I can't wait till it's my turn again. I'm already starting to think about the movies I'll pick. Um, to be honest, I think you, you have thought more about Sam's rock-hard ass than I have. <laughs> yeah, we I, did talk I, about I, that a lot. Well, you did. Anyway, go. Yeah, well, I don't know... I, I don't remember doing that that much, but yeah. Uh, he said that was great trivia as well, that the house is very close to where Gab lives. Are people able to get close enough to see it these days? Anyway, cheers and thanks again. And I said to him, well, we'll ask Gab on the episode. Yeah, I, I again, forgot. When I get a moment, it's not far from me. I'm going to probably try and drive to the location. Um, it's probably going to be a case of me just at the gates, you know, um, it's going to be through. a public place, I'm sure. Um, so I will try. It shouldn't be too hard to find with the technology nowadays. And literally just up the road. If we had more time, Dan, I said we could have done that. Yeah. We're very. We've got other stuff to do. Time, but... yeah, so busy. But um, so there we go, Kev. Thank you so much. It's always lovely to hear that. And um, there'll be in a couple of episodes time. We'll have another p- uh, patron pick from another one of our patrons. So that's exciting stuff. So that was yeah. a follow up. I just wanted to. I do enjoy doing these patron film episodes because. Um, uh, you know, quite often picking films we might not have even ever seen, um, yeah, that's very true. and uh, or, and not, or not thought to even watch. And interesting to um, then have these conversations. I do still worry, guys, you patrons, if you've got something you really love, and I'll come along and I'm like, I don't like it. But how do I do that? But I'm going to have to be honest. If I don't like it, well, luckily, luckily, I haven't. It's been all right. And you know? luckily, for some reason, I seem to like 99.99 percent of films, or at least see some weird positivity in them all. Which we'll find out in this episode. You're a positive person. I am. And I'm just a grouch. Not really. No, I'm not. Um, Right, okay. Okay, so that's that. That's what I wanted to to mention. Uh, What have you been watching? What have you been up to? I went with our cast member, Mark. We went to watch Garth Marenghi's Dark Mm. Place. Well, no, no, sorry. Garth Marenghi live on stage. He's doing a book read of his new book. So for anyone who doesn't know Garth Marenghi... And you probably don't. And if you don't, you probably should get on this. He is... 
outside of the UK, I know that he in America there is a bit of a following for him, uh, in the same vein that there is for sort of space and stuff like that. So, um, Garth Marenghi is a comedy, a British comedy show about a guy who's basically like a Stephen King style. James Herbert style writer who takes himself incredibly seriously and also star writes and stars in his own short films and TV shows. It's all look very much tongue in cheek, silly, very dry British humour. Hilarious stuff. I think there were two seasons of the show. Very no, short. No, no, no. Was it Six just the- episodes? One season. Oh, uh, was it? Yeah, I've got the box set. Um, it's incredibly funny stuff. Um, Loads of homages to horror and sci-fi Absolutely. all the way through. There's, there's one episode which is basically John Compton's The Fog, but it's mm-hmm. called Scotch Mist. Yep. And it has the Hilarious. same music at the beginning. It's kind of like spaced, but real horror film references. But I hadn't even seen it. So about few, How'd you not? About two days before the show, I just watched it more, and I was wow. like, this is incredible. It's good, isn't it? Because it's essentially a, a, a show which is a behind-the-scenes of a character which we are supposed to already be established and we've been watching for many years mm. it's like if Arnold Schwarzenegger just I'm throwing it out there it's just a name that everyone knows was like to just have a show where it's uh, headshots of him talking about how he made a show which was popular mm. and then showing some of that show and going back to it so it's so cleverly made and it's has so many layers of dry humour and taking horror. You have to watch this out. I was so blown away by it so I went to see it live though In, in a way it's it's got some similar, it shares similar DNA with One Cut of the Dead in some ways. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's, yeah. it's made to look bad as well. The editing is sometimes yeah, quite continuity jarring. Continuity is totally off, but that's, it, that's, that's the funny thing. The next about take, it. the cup won't be there or something. Yeah. It's really, it's kind of like the Leslie Nielsen Naked Gun type, but in a British way. I like his boss, who's obviously been told by the director of one scene, you've got to be really angry. And he's like, right, listen to me. I've had enough. You need to do this. Then anything. it cuts to one of the cast members saying, I've never seen someone acting so bad. I, this is incredible. Like, literally, the worst I've ever seen. And then there's a bit where they're running in slow motion, and he says, most of our episodes had around five minutes of slow motion in it. It was the only way, we really, we could fill out the 30-minute... And then it just shows, oh, and they're running in slow like some music playing in a real eighty square <laughs> form. Really good, check it out. So um, the state, the live show was basically this character still out, and we apparently know know this character still in the world. Yeah, God, still God, making, Marengi, pro- and he's written a new book, so he's gone around. So he's there reading his book. So it's a, and, and you can buy the book, and he was there signing it in character. It's genius, yeah. and he started reading it, and then I had said to Stephanie, no. She looked at me, you know, and it's and just it's really so bad dry. Written as well, because he'll read it, he'll say things like, the knife stabbed, 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 yeah, and, and the had, blood dripped. And on the stage... Dripped, and it's like, who writes that? Like? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> on, the, on the stage, he had a little tape deck, which he'd had music score, which he'd play underneath her deck. So he'd go up to the microphone, tape deck, and go, start playing, so it'd be a wrong bit. He'd go, nope. But next bit, nope. Oh, so nope. it's even more layered nope. than, than the TV show, because nope. it's now... No, and it go for ages... No, like, plays a bit more music, think, and then listen for a while and go, no, like, then play it, go, right, here we go. And this is, and go, at this point, I, and it's so well How done. It, I would have been laughing my head off all the Then halfway through. through, picks a little cast member out, uh, cast, picks an audience, audience member, member out, comes out, and um, they sit on the stage and say, I want you to just uh, pick people from the, the audience to ask questions. And they ask questions about stuff and things, and he just answers them as Garth Marenghi. Oh, so good. Well, the TV show is brilliant, guys. Check it out. Obviously, the live show you, you can't see unless it is in your town, which I don't think it's it only in the UK. Yeah, it'll only be UK stuff. But I saw I saw Mark had messaged you about that. I was very jealous that you guys got to go and do that. So that's very awesome stuff. Oh, I'm still, I'm still owing money. I'm owing the money for the ticket. <laughs> still owing the money. Um, I had some fun recently. Uh, again, uh, with Ricky Morgan, our podcasting, our Legion brother. I appeared on another episode of his Doctor Movie Movie Review Show, episode 116. Um, he just randomly hit me up one day, knowing that I'm a bit of a Kung Fu Bruce Lee fan, and said, "Hey, I'm thinking about doing a Bruce Lee retrospective." Now, I thought, I thought if you know, maybe one film to review, but no, he wanted to look at all five of Bruce Lee's movies as well as a brief sort of summary of the man's life, mystery, legend. So. 
uh episode 116 of his show doctor movie check it out it's me and ricky having about an hour's worth of fun chatting about the man the mystery the legend of bruce lee it's pretty awesome it's a subject that i weirdly know a lot about i find out and i know gav you're a big bruce lee fan as well yeah yeah totally. I mean, who and the isn't amazing. Isn't it? I, got, I got there and i got to see it in the uh, cinema which is quite an experience we, and, and that's her first viewing oh no no that's a lie i think it might be her second view we Go both on. concluded that enter the dragon is quite obviously and, and the the best martial arts movie ever made um, and the blueprint for a lot of Bond movies, a lot of movies that came after a lot of video games like Street Fighter, you know, Mortal Kombat, because all of that comes from this movie where there's a man sent to an island where there's a giant martial arts competition, but there's like an underlying It's a good, it, it's nice, isn't it? It's like going there, it's like going there and infiltrate them and come out and... But, and it's like, it's like a video game, so there's layers, you've got to fight different people, but then you've got Lalo Schiffer and Score, well, big, John big, Saxon... Big Boss was a video game, wasn't it? Going up with different layers. Oh, the, g- the Game of Death. Game of Death. Yeah. We talked about that as well. So check it out. That was uh, Ricky. So Ricky, thank you for having me again on your show. And I look forward to the next time we team up. What have you been watching? I did watch a movie which I was actually quite... Um, uh, I didn't know what it was. I was looking... I really wanted... Like, Is this a Steven Seagal film? <laughs> no, I did I did watch oh, a few God. Steven Seagal things. Um, no, I was prepping for what we just shot. So I've been trying to watch action films which I hadn't possibly seen. Um, and I watched The Edge... Ooh. Is that the... Oh, no, I'm thinking of... I was thinking of Vertical Limit, not the Edge. What's the Edge? Do I know that Edge one? is with Anthony Hopkins and Alec Baldwin. Ooh. Oh, yeah, I have seen that a long time ago. Really good. It's on Disney. Really good film. Um, an intellectual billionaire and two other men struggle to band together and survive after getting stranded in the Alaska yes. wilderness with a, a bloodthirsty Kodiak bear. Yes, I have seen this. What a great movie. Yeah, I know. It's Anthony, Anthony Hopkins. Hopkins is incredible in it. He's a great actor. He's a good actor. Yeah, totally. Um, really good film. Um, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's just an action movie, and like um, Alec Baldwin's pretty good. You know, is he going down? Do you know? Well, every time I read the news, it says he's being charged and he's not being charged. But I know they're making another season of that show. Mm. Um, show. The show that the girl got killed on. It was a film, that wasn't it? No, it's a, a show, I believe. They're doing another season of it. Oh, I thought it was a movie. No, it's a show. Uh, a movie called Rust. No, it's a show. Oh, really? I'm I didn't sure know. It's a I TV no show. Idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they're still going ahead with I that. Think well, they are, but I well, well, if it's a TV show, then yeah, yeah, yeah that's going to happen. But he's, I, I thought it was a film, so I thought that would have been shut down, and I said you wouldn't see the film. The problem is, it's like where do you where do you draw the line? Like the guy that killed Brandon Lee, he killed Brandon Lee. He retired from acting. But he didn't do it on purpose, you know what I mean? It was he was handed the gun. Yeah, that is it's a it's a it's a chain of bad bad uh, work well, and bad luck. Uh, personally, it's the armor. The armor is in charge yeah. of the gun. Well, on the when crow, they give it over. That it's the armor. And on the Should, crow, the armor wasn't on set that day. Yeah, that's exact. That, that's why you have an armor. You know, they, they, their job specifically is to safely look after weapons and make sure they're not loaded. In fact, I believe on the crow, he was supposed to die from quite a big stab wound and they decided let's just try doing a shot with a gun and didn't check whether the gun was um that's just you know, how it was loaded it. and set and stuff so. yeah what it done they're probably trying to speed up things oh while we're here let's just quickly but try why why yeah but anyway you know so yeah i don't really know much but yeah anyway so you enjoyed this anthony hopkins really, bear really movie good, really we love film. a good bear movie don't we yeah because yeah, i watched. saw coco and bear now, and yeah. i love bear movies and i said to you we've got to do a fucking bear we're, we're gonna do a bear movie we've got to do grizzly and it's gonna be grizzly and i'm gonna be a, i'm gonna be bear when we do it of course you are bareback nude <laughs> um well that's cool i'm glad you enjoyed that kev are we bears or are we t- i don't know if we're big enough uh I think because we're a bit older, we're probably bears. I think younger, you'd be classed as an otter. But also, we're not gay either. So I think grizzly, like a grizzly is... I'm not sure. I don't really know. Can (laughs) can a straight guy be a bear? I don't know. I I don't know. I have no idea. Um, Well, I don't know. We'll (laughs) we'll find out. Anyway, we can talk about that in our bear episode we do in the future. (laughs) Well, yeah, maybe we'll cover that. (laughs) Right. Have you Um, watched anything? Yeah, I've watched a couple of little bits. Um, I watched Nightmare Alley. The um, Guillermo del Toro movie. Have you seen yeah. this? No, I Sarah has seen it, and I don't think she gave me positive reviews. I might be wrong. It, I did enjoy it. It's uh, Bradley Cooper, 
Um, it's got a very good cast, actually. I don't think I'll bother. Uh, a grifter working his way up from a low-ranking carnival worker to a lauded psychic medium matches wits with a psychologist bent on exposing him. So it's, it's like, weird. it's this mind game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it is, it looks Del Toro, like, it, visually, is, it's beautiful. Is, is little Gavi going to struggle to watch it? You might. <laughs> but... It's, for me, like, what I found really interesting was because it gives you the background about how they do these tricks, particularly almost a hundred years ago with these carnivals with visit towns and how they oh, look at I someone like, in the audience yeah, and go, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, I do like that." You've lost your father recently, and they're like, "Oh, yeah," but it's someone feeding them information from what they're hearing through the crowd, and it's very interesting. Bradley Cooper is always amazing. Um, it's got a very good cast. Uh, I, overall, I gave it a seven out of ten. Um, I did really enjoy it. I just wanted more horror more gore i expect that although there is a couple of fucking gory scenes towards the end because it's Giammaro del toro but yeah that was the one thing i'd watched and that only came out in 2021 so that's a bit behind on that one uh, but yeah that's one thing i've watched i've got a couple of other things but you you shoot next um well yeah i've, I've been watching loads of bits of bobs I, like i told you on uh, when we went live the eye of the tiger with gary boosie you did. watching that movie i just have to quickly say about it just because gary boosie sticks a stick of dynamite it does actually put some ky on it mm. up a man's ass while he's in the hospital to try and get information out of him i think he's gonna get more on information out of him but um he likes it and um you know that's 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 that happens I'll tell this story it's now. It's a weird film. The whole budget went on Gary Boosie and the song Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. I'll tell this story now because <clears throat> I know we're not going to talk much about our Kickstarter movie, but just because you mentioned KY Jelly. That's what I'm going to talk about. Our lead actress uh, on on the movie is Swedish-Peruvian uh, and when we required some KY Jelly on set, not for anything other than the effect of sweat on camera, she was not familiar with the term ky jelly and i had to explain to her <laughs> is this another credit in the film ky, KY jelly, jelly explainer uh yeah i mean i was i was helped by our buddy boz a little bit because i was like it's, it's like vaseline you know vaseline she's like yeah i was like so it's like that but it's used for more intimate purposes and she looks at me for a moment and i think boz basically just said something like you know sex or something like that and it just she said oh right yes I understand yeah. that and that is Boz actually who you guys know as a podcaster yeah, Boz indeed. he was on set with us another he, one of he, our brothers yeah he, he was crew with us um, anyway should we get on with it yeah one other movie I've watched recently just and I want to do this to plug my I don't other, want to get on with it it's like going five but my, my other podcast that I do with RJ McCready shout out to RJ is back after a little hiatus. Indeed. And that is Blame It On The Aliens podcast. Um, so we had our 10th don't, episode. Don't blame it on the aliens. We, well, that's I'm going to do an episode counteracting yours. Don't, don't blame, blame it on the aliens. Gonna set blame up it on the Dan and RJ. <laughs> <laughs> so we... RJ picked that subject and it was the Travis Walton abduction story. Very famous yes. alien abduction story. I, I, on my podcast, went into and did the UFO thing, so I actually sort of researched a bit. It's a very fascinating subject. I ended up doing about six hours of video watching on it. I watched the two-hour Joe Rogan interview. I was going to say, did you do Joe Rogan? Yeah, yeah, I did. And, um, and off the back of that as well, we both agreed... Did you watch we'd, Fire in the well, Sky? Well, that's it. We both agreed we'd watch Fire in the Sky and lean up to it, which is completely different to his story anyway. It's fiction, in his In his way. account of it is they, they actually helped him, and they healed him and yeah, but obviously a it's a Hollywood movie. It's a movie and they are making a more offensive. they're making yeah with his production and his input but anyway fire in the sky is what i want to talk about i also wanted to plug my other show so go go check that out uh me and rj talking about travis walton but fire in the sky revisited it we covered it a few years ago for our alien movies um episode i think fire in the sky might be in my top three alien movies of all time it's up there with like the thing it is that scene at the end is terrifying the screaming the eye drops the drill the the, the suffocation and everything that he goes through and i know he obviously he says none of that happened and believe it believe in the story or don't believe in the story but either way there is something that i about that when i watched the age i watched that which was sort of the age of the X-Files and everything in the early 90s. You know, that movie gets under your skin, doesn't it? And mm. it really makes you think, 
Jesus Christ, I hope I'm never abducted by aliens because I don't want to be probed in. In my eyes, in my bum, or anywhere, really. Mm. You like that movie too, don't you? It was all right. Um, we did we cover it. We covered it, yeah. yeah, for yeah, our yeah. Aliens. We covered that and the fourth kind. Yeah. Um, no, I do. I, I quite enjoyed it when we watched it. That is just. Yeah. I ended up buying it actually. I, I just figured, you know what? I thought I remember seeing it on Sky Movies back in the day. Well, I watched it. I think I turned well, Sky One, in fact. I, I think I said this on our show, on mine and RJ's show. Um, I came in. The first time I saw it, it was already about half an hour in. It was on television, and I just assumed I was watching an episode of The X Files because it felt and it feels very much like an X Files episode that's been extended into a feature, particularly because Robert Patrick's in it as well. But it's not; it's its own thing. It's nothing to do with The X Files. But yeah, Fire in the Sky. It's an older movie, but I was watching X Files the other day, and it's such a very well produced film. But do you so know good. what? Sort of boom. Did you? Saw the fluffy yeah, bit. The, the just problem once. is, just, that's the only thing I've ever seen wrong in a in it. And that's not. I'm not just just for that. It was just funny because yeah. they're so well produced. But they missed that. I remember once thinking I caught a boom shot or in Chris Carter, isn't it? Yeah. I remember once thinking I caught a boom shot in um, uh, the Last Nightmare or whatever it's called, the new Wes Craven's New Nightmare. And then I realised it purpose. was intended to yeah. just popped into the frame. Meta, meta and that's when I realised, oh, they've been using her real name for yeah. the scene. Very clever stuff, and we'll get to that that one day. But so, yeah. exactly the time we should begin <laughs> to it. <laughs> Excellent. I'm glad you said that. It's extremely right. Happy Easter, happy spring, happy St. Patrick's Day. And uh, it's probably about time that we... Get the fuck into oh, this. Annually as well, guys. Not annually. <laughs> yeah. Annually, we apologise to all of our Irish listeners. And annually, we apologise also. And we apologise. Because we'll probably slip into some terrible leprechaun impressions. Uh, Dan's really probably apologising for himself. This is Warwick Davis's... I the, have PC restraint. I can probably do a better Irish accent than him, but he does do quite a bad Irish leprechaun accent. But do you know what? He was having fun with it. I might I might try and slip some out. Gav's going to also attempt an iced tea. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Well, let's let's take a break and we'll have our trailer for Leprechaun I'm 5. I'm half quick now. Okay. Leprechaun 5. I have to work on that. In the hood. And we'll be back after the trailer. That's the least amount of notes I've ever taken for film. Here we go! When Mac Daddy discovers a magic flute... It's all I want right here. <laughs> ...he becomes the richest man in hip-hop. Hey, get these losers out. But when three young rappers... Kind of like Robin Hood. <laughs> then we're gonna be robbing in the hood. <laughs> ...stumble onto his musical treasure... Everyone will have to pay the piper. Unhand me gold, you thieving hoods. You got more loot than Tiger Woods. <laughs> they got the flute. We gotta get that back our party, so. He's mean. Did somebody say blow? <laughs> what kind of voodoo shit you boys into? He's green. Curious aroma. That's the bomb up there. The bomb? Yeah. The bomb. He's down. Does she meet with your approval? Sit down, my healthy Philly. You're about to meet a club named Philly. Come and let me lay hands upon your sinful creature. <laughs> What's that? It's rap. And then I'm gonna take this and wrap it around your ugly <laughs> Warwick Davis. Ice tea. But the Herald Isle to your place in the hood, and the man of green comes to do no good. You know who the left is the real OG. Got your ass! <laughs> we don't go down without a fight. Right? Right? Right. Ah! Leprechaun 5. Size doesn't matter when you're still the man. <laughs> cool, so... Our first review for our Easter episode is Leprechaun 5. So we've covered the other four over the years. Leprechaun 5, In the Hood, from the year 2000. That looks extremely excited. Yeah, you get to see me. about doing this. Uh, this stars, obviously, Warwick Davis, legend, and the other legend, Ice-T. That's motherfucking cute. Ice-T. Ice-T. So, uh, <laughs> nothing like Ice-T. Here's the synopsis. So when three rappers want to get even with a pimp... They accidentally unleash 
a leprechaun, of course, who goes on a killing rampage in the hood. In the hood. No. He doesn't go into the, into the hood. He goes in the hood. Now that sounds ridiculous, mm. but should also be a lot of fun, shouldn't it? But sure. Gav's first note on this. My first note, of, you know, is this real? Really? Because like, if this is real, let's get into what, the, it. This trivia fact. The, that yeah, you're that, about my to. first note. That that is, if it's on, I live if, by the life, the life mantra. If it's an IMDb trivia, <laughs> then it's real. <laughs> yeah, um, but if it is, I think we should play out the scene okay. of what I'd happened. Like to, okay, I'd like to do that. So my first note is filming briefly stopped because Warwick couldn't stop farting. Warwick Davis had turbulent flatulence. Not turbulent. <laughs> I reckon you think it was. He had flatulence, which was just so much chronic flatulence. Chronic. So, so we've got we've got a small person in a leprechaun costume on set. Everyone's okay, ready and rolling. <clears throat> it just keeps farting. I'm sorry about that. It just keeps farting and farting and farting, and it had so much gas. I'm, so, I'm sorry, guys. We're gonna have to stop. Maybe not oh, lucky what's, charms. What's wrong, what's wrong with Varric? What's wrong with him? He can't stop farting. Oh, okay. I've never known of a movie stopping for someone farting. Uh, apparently it's around two days. Two days? Yeah. I don't know if he's got... Is that where the budget went? <laughs> I don't know if he's got stomach problems or had stomach problems, but that is a long time to be farting Dave, for. Dave, Dave, has Warwick stopped farting yet? No. He's in the background. God's just sake. <laughs> How is that possible? Yeah. What did he eat? That's what know. we want to know. What was what, what was catering? Are we blaming the catering? We could do. It might well be the catering. The budget was one point four million for this. We'll talk budgets more when we get to the next one as well. But one point four million. Bear that in mind, listeners. Dear sweet. That Eastern number comes back again. It does come back again. So we've got iced tea in there. So we think, okay, yeah, that's going to be, uh, you know. So we so we start the movie off with a little rhyme. Well, well, for me, okay. I felt like I'd gone into some Warwick Davis purgatory, and I'd lost time completely. Time stopped as I watched this. I'd go, oh, I wonder what time is, and it'd be like two minutes after I'd last looked. And it's like, how has time actually stopped while I watch this? Time goes by so quickly in my life. How has it stopped it? If I ever need a period in my life where I feel like I'm rushing and time is going by too quick. I just need to chill. I need a holiday. Warwick, uh, Warwick Five, as I like to call it. Warwick Five. Warwick Five, smashing them in the hood. Just watch that film. Just, <laughs> he's not, he's not smashing. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds like a different movie. Jesus. Just watch that movie, Gav. Time will slow down. You'll feel like you've had a holiday for probably two years and you can just crack back on. Actually, it's been 90 minutes. Not even 90. <laughs> it's about 80 odd minutes. Exactly. Brilliant. Um, so we, well, uh, with like, so for anyone who hasn't watched the Leprechaun movie before, he does rhyme and do little rhymes all the way through. And I will try and quote some of those as, as we go through it. But this movie opens in the usual way with a little rhyme, which is, Death to he who sets the Leprechaun free. And I won't do the rest in the Irish accent. Steal his gold, it will corrupt your soul, you see. For many a moon the legend has grown. Death toll increases, solution unknown. Beware the evil wanderer in search of the loot, lest you suffer the wrath of his golden flute. <laughs> Flee while you can, the future's not good, for no one is safe from a lep in the hood. Well, with golden flute. And that is essentially the plot of this movie is about iced tea. With a badass He's got a golden wig. flute that makes him the head of a, a gangster rap label <laughs> through magic yeah now I, i'm not uh, i'm okay guys my mental health isn't suffering i'm not on some terrible drugs i'm telling you the truth this is the plot of the movie as i say this and then three guys try to steal that flute so they can become the next big thing in rap all the while a leprechaun in the hood <laughs> is trying to retrieve his flute my notes are about twelve percent. What I normally do, never have had that little. Specific. Yeah, never have had that little amount of notes. Yeah, iced tea, and I like the beginning of it. It's iced tea with other some other hood member, yeah. hood dude, and they're just looking around trying to steal some shit. 
And to make make him look more ghetto and younger, they've put an afro wig on Ice T. He's got an afro wig and huge platforms and flares because it's supposed to be, I guess, twenty years ago, thirty it's, years ago. It's such really bad, not really much effort. Just chuck an afro wig on him, yeah, yeah, and platforms. That's how we know it's seventies then. The is, that, is. is that it? So the thing is with this, and, and I'll sort of sum up Ice T in this. Really, he at the very least, is having a lot of fun in this film. You can tell. Because he's getting paid. He's getting paid. And he's getting paid to... He might have even written some of his own lines. Because he's getting paid 1.3 million. <laughs> Budget, 1.4. Ice-T, 1.3. Uh, he's doing a lot of his sort of usual rhyme... Well, not even rhyming, but he's saying lines that he would have said in, in other films or uh, his own songs. And... He's definitely just having a lot of fun with it, really. He's kind of the star, really. Sadly, Warwick Davis really isn't in this very much. Um, but we'll get into it. Should we get into this? Should we get? Can we get out of this? We'll get out of it soon. So yeah. Ice, t- Ice T's this dude. They're robbing it, uh, what, uh, uh, looking for shit. Just being fucking little hood rats, to be honest with you. And they um, they they find a, a, a leprechaun statue. And oh wow, look at that! And it's got a necklace on it and stuff. They find a load of pot of gold and that stuff. Oh, brilliant! Look at this. We just found a load of pot of gold and a weird fucking leprechaun statue just over there. What, what weird as shit? So they start taking it. The other dude, I'm not. I, I haven't got many notes, but but uh, the other dude uh, takes the necklace off the statue and it brings back Mr. Warwick Davis, Leprechaun Five. Well, he says when he sees the. Uh statue he says look at this midget midas motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> and yeah they take the necklace and as we know the necklace around an, a unicorn's a uh, unicorn you <laughs> okay, know that'll be a different film around a leprechaun's neck makes it turn to, to stone so as soon as they remove it he comes alive he kills ice t's buddy um but ice t manages to get the necklace back on him by accident yeah like it falls up and in it, the air and lands it turns back to stone and then he's got the flute and and then then we go into a story which is just a load of shit with a load of fucking bad acting. So <laughs> we've reviewed a lot of films over the I ten s- years of podcasting, and these a group of actors, and I you know, hopefully not they're not listening, and I don't really want to be mean, but it might not be their fault. I don't think they should probably be in this profession. Um, so we've got three rappers play who are their names are Postmaster P. Because he's always delivering on time, apparently, he says at one point. So, Postmaster P. It's not a not, uh, British postal worker. Stray Bullet. Oh, <laughs> controversial. Stray Bullet. Which is quite a cool rap name. You know, Stray Bullet. It sounds like it should be like an Onyx or, you know, Stray Bullet. Stray Bullet's okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, who's the other one? Uh, Butch. I think he's the DJ. Butch. Not, on, not on a great. From Britain. Yeah. Not great. Well, that's Dutch. This is. Oh Butch. yeah, of course. <laughs> It'd be weird if he's Dutch. Dutch is probably a better rap name than Butch, but yeah, Butch sounds like. Oh, he's quite Butch, isn't he? Ooh. Yeah. Um. So those are the three. Yep. And yeah, these guys, you know, they they struggle with their rap career. Well, I'm not surprised. They they they're trying to be like they're not what they're sold did essentially they're trying to be like a, a real positive uh, uh, a rap crew and no one wants to give them a gig one person says you can be on this label they're like great it's like Def Jam but not Def Jam uh, Def Ham or something like that Jeff Ham great we could be on Jeff Ham record label Jeff, <laughs> Jeff Ham record label I've wanted to be on that all my life since I was a kid Jeff Ham's the fucking dopest it is and um. So, so they, they, and this guy's like, you can be on the label, but you got to start saying shit and rob this. Yeah, and they want them to use the N word more and talk about gang- just, being just gangster, gangster rap. Just gangster hip hop, because yeah. it's what because makes that's, the money at the time. Yeah, exactly. And they don't really want to do it, but then they they roll ice tea, don't they? Well, so where this movie goes wrong for me is it rounds. I've got many notes left. <laughs> well, I'm freestyling mine. Where this movie goes wrong for me is. It rams the, uh, like, we're in the hood, We've, there's poverty. It rams that down your throat a bit too much as, as an audience member. So they're always a bit, everything they're wearing is a bit raggedy. Their equipment, the reason they fail their audition is because their equipment blows up. And they figure they just, they need some money. So they, 
essentially, there's a story there. There is a story, and they're, they're, and they're sort of debating in the th- between the three of them that we we want to make this. We've got talent. We've got two rappers. We've got a DJ. We can. We could. We believe in ourselves, but we just need a, a chance, and the only chance we can think of, which is a very sort of. We've seen this story before. Is you're in the herd, and you you just need to. You need to break the rules. You need to break the law. You need to rob someone, which a lot of people in the hood end up the route they end up going there. So, like you said, Gav, there is a story in here, but they do ram it down your throat a bit too much because they keep showing too much of the hood and the this everybody's. Is more. Yeah. So these guys decide, you know, let's go meet Ice T, uh, who who now might be able to give him a bank loan, essentially. Yeah. So they go meet him, and, and uh, he sort of is, is talking to them, and he's like, "Yo." Change it up. And they're like, we might change it. Like, no, there's no might. You either change up your lyrics and you start talking about guns and robbing people and that and become gangster rappers or there's nothing. And you've already hesitated, so get out. And in fact, I've got... But as they walk in his office, I've got the quote of uh, what he says on the phone. Uh, where is it? Uh, it's quite quite an interesting quote that he says to somebody. Uh, but this is iced tea. This is iced tea, yeah. That's motherfucking tea. Uh, yeah, he, say, he says to them, while well, I'm learning that, he says to them, we need to change a few things. I ain't with that. Save the fucking hood bullshit. Treat your girl right. That shit is whack, all right? This label, we rap about Uzis, blowing motherfuckers' heads off. Y'all know what I'm saying? I'm talking smack your bitch up and shoot your motherfucking homeboy in the face type shit. All right? And obviously, they're really not into that kind of thing, so... But they plan on how can I get some money? It's like a guy Richie's uh, uh, lock, stock, and two smoking barrels. How can I get some money? Um, and uh, they think, well, let's just rob him. Yeah, so they've got the balls to go back to Ice T's place uh, and, and rob him. They saw that leprechaun statue. They saw he's got gold. He's got a gold flute, and they go there and they they, they break into his place and he catches them right at the end, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, he, and so there's a bit of a shootout. Um, does he get shot? So he get shot. I can't remember. Yeah, they think they killed him. They think they've killed him. That's right. So they run off. It's escalated. Yeah. So if I can kill someone and robbing them, and it's then, a little bit, of, a little bit of past their rap lyrics, and then uh, okay, we're not gonna, we're not, we won't, we will not rap negative words, but we will shoot and kill you and take your money. Okay, it's a little bit going about against your. Uh, Beliefs. Just to give you some backstory over how hard Ice T, whose character, by the way, guys, is Mac Daddy. It's really inventive. <laughs> at least at this point, he doesn't have his afro on because time has passed, yeah. and he hasn't. He's adapted so when to they, normal shoes. When they walk in his office to talk about being signed to his label, he's on the phone saying to somebody, "Hey, you, listen to me." You don't want to fuck with me, okay? I hope you had sex last night, because I'm going to come over there, cut off your dick, and then I'm going to feed it to my pit bull. Then I'm going to burn the shit when it comes out of my goddamn dog's ass. Do you hear me? So don't fuck with me. It's like, why did they write that? I mean, Ice-T delivers it well, and he makes it sound good, but what a strange... I could give Ice-T my shopping list, and he would deliver it well. He'd be like, yo, you got to get some eggs, then some milk, full fat milk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then we need yogurt. Exactly. Cheese. It'd be fine. Be good. And he'd make it rhyme. But he's a writer himself, so he must have been looking at the script going, the fuck have I got to say? And he goes, how much you pay me? 1.3 million? I'll do it. Yeah. Well, anyway, they they, uh, they get away because they think they've killed him and they go off to the pawn brokers. Mm. And they're sort of trying to pawn this off to him. And um, while they're all chatting to the pawn broker, the main guy, Postmaster P., he hasn't really told them that he's stolen this golden flute, the other guys yet. And he just blows it. Nothing happens that we know of. But when he blows it, everybody in the shop turns around, mesmerised, and looks at him. Everyone likes to see some pipe blowing. <laughs> okay. Flesh flute. <laughs> uh, so, essentially, what this magic flute does is it kind of if you blow it's like a dog whistle for humans you blow it no one can really hear it but it does make anyone who hears it uh sort of mesmerized and i I guess not in love but they sort of kiss the ass of anybody that blows it basically Mm. so what they can discover is we won't go we won't break this film down scene by scene but what they discover is as they as they they perform 
and they blow the if they perform and they blow the flute the audience thinks they are like the next Wu-Tang Clan Mm. the next big thing Mm. even though actually sadly the actors can barely rap I know it's really badly done and there's even a shot actually where one of the guys takes off his shirt to deliver the lilac and he's like yo and that's what I said and then it cuts back to him and then he's taking his shirt off again Mm. it's like oh continuity what Mm. happened well well the editors themselves could work around it there's something you could do even if that was a thing so and it's even just the people letting that out you know stuff like that it's just it's just lazy leprechaun by the way this is a leprechaun movie weirdly we haven't even talked about leprechaun he he gets out yeah he's back he comes back and he's he's hunting them down ice tea's not dead ice tea isn't dead um, oh, so he shares a joint with Leprechaun. Yeah, yeah. We have we have this dude that's uh, the the dwarf pawnbroker. I think he's Choi. Um, this guy and he says he would dance a hip hop videos and, and does like this. Dance this that guy. was kind of comical. Yeah, that, that was that. We meet. We do meet a few other members of the hood, um, but essentially it's just the same thing over and over. Which is, you know, they're, they're sort of fighting in in a group about what they want to do and whether what. Because you know, they find out that Ice T's alive and, just, and he, he wants his flute back, and but the leprechaun wants the flute and his gold. There's a, there's a transvestite in it. Very. The, the, they the rappers going stay over the transvestite's house. Fontaine, yeah. Fontaine, yeah. Fontaine is a very huge, big guy who dresses in women's clothes, mm-hmm. and it's quite. And I guess an offensive scene, really, by it, today's it, standards, because they sort of are very disgusted by him. And it, it's yeah, it's, it's a real. Uh, they're like, bit, they're take, scared take. of him, in fact. It's the whole thing of it. The whole is really uh, terrible way. It's like the worst negative way of looking at anything, and just, yeah. oh, it's, just it's a joke. It's it's just even we know it's a joke. Years ago, we don't care about them. So we just think it's a joke. There's no thought of uh, transvestites watching it and their, yeah. their opinions. Um, and Leprechaun and transvestite get it on. Well, the leprechaun knocks on the door because he knows that the boys are... I've never ever said in a film review before, leprechaun and trans, but well, I get it on. They don't get it on, but... Well, they, they think that... Yeah, so lepre- this is like one of the funnier thinks. scenes where the leprechaun knocks on the door. And she, she doesn't... Fontaine He thinks. slash she doesn't even... Well, she... Well, what is but, a pronoun for trans transvestite? Let's say they. But they right. basically open the door and go, Oh, hey, little man. And the leprechaun's like, Oh, hello. <laughs> and... Uh, they take him in the bedroom. I don't know what they were thinking. And they think there's some humping going on because they open up the door and, uh, and their legs are up in the air and stuff. But Fontaine's actually, on their back with legs in the air. But it's Leprechaun strangling Fontaine. Mm-hmm. So Leprechaun is leaving a trail of blood as he hunts oh, down these guys. At what point did Fontaine go? Now that's an attractive thing that I want to have sex with. Wrinkly little face, two foot tall, horrible teeth. There's someone for everyone. There is someone for everyone. And that's, this is, if this had been our love episode, ladies and gentlemen, remember, there's someone for everyone. So my favourite scene comes up next, which is... Is this when they set a trap? Hey, Father Johnson, or whatever his name is, can we uh, hide out in your church? Because uh, we're being hunted down by Mac Daddy. Oh, what, the random character? And he says, you can hide in my church, for sure. However, you you guys are in a music group, and I want you to perform for the sermon tomorrow. Yeah, they and did. they go, oh, all right. So then they start rapping about Jesus Christ and singing about Jesus Christ, and it's like, but they keep dropping like f bombs and n bombs, and the audience are quite disgusted until Postmaster P blows his flute, and then they become like this amazing gospel rap choir group which is quite funny in a way, mm. but also not. Mm. It's very strange. Um, yeah. The, the, reason, the other reason I like this is because for absolutely no fucking reason whatsoever, other than the fact that Ice-T in real life knows him and he was probably visiting the set, Coolio walks into the back of the church. He doesn't say anything, point, just looks up. Looks up, and then that's it. I would say he's in it for about a second or two. Mm-hmm. Very strange. Rest in peace, Coolio. Leprechaun puts his hand through a man. Yep, we get a, a Mortal Kombat style, which is a movie he's done in, in a lot of the movies. He r- puts his hand into you and rips out your heart or something like and that. And Leprechaun does a rap and that's on my notes. Leprechaun then um, turns... So he starts taking over Ice Tea because Ice Tea owns a club as well, mm. as well as a record label. And he ends up starting to take over this club by uh, getting people to smoke four-leaf clover weed. Mm, mm. so again we've got a tiny amount of storyline here mm. and he gets all of these hot girls uh 
like leprechaun homegirls or something he calls them, um, in skimpy underwear and sunglasses. And they're all kind of his zombies, his zombie hip-hop dancing girls that follow leprechaun around. Honestly, again, it sounds like I'm having a weird fever dream, as I'm saying. Well, we, well a video called Sarah earlier, didn't I? What did she say that she felt like she was having while watching it? So aneurysm. She, she said her brain felt like it was going to be leaking out of her ears watching yeah. it. Um, so he's got, now got an army of zombie leprechaun homegirl fly, fly girls they're called. Leprechaun fly girls. And they do his bidding for him. However, there's a bit of backwards and forwards. There's a bit of fighting, a bit of shooting. The flute gets to Ice-T, then it gets back to the leprechaun, then it gets back to the boys. And it all ends with Actually, an unexpected ending. Two of the rap group die, leaving just Postmaster P as the only um, surviving member of the rap group. But he goes full gangster rap because he ends with him doing a gangster's rap. And you find out his manager is the Leprechaun. Um, so, actually, the Leprechaun wins and becomes um, rap label manager for Postmaster P. And uh, that is the end of it it's it it's not even a horror movie other than some very rubbish gore um so let's talk about why it's bad because it's it's probably one of the worst films we've reviewed we've and i've tried to find a couple of bits that are good about it if you want to make films watch this movie and everything in this movie don't do it yeah also, if you've got a budget of 1.4 million, don't but, spend a lot of that on iced tea. No. Because I feel like a lot of the budget went on getting iced tea, a big name in this. Yeah. Because he's a huge rapper, a big name, and would have cost a lot of money. But, they could have got someone who's still known. Yeah, but. Who's cheaper. But his name on the front cover of this movie, horror movie, Ice Tea, is going to sell. Of so course it is. And rent, the movie, rent the film. Now, this would have been right still in VHS rental territory. 2000. Even Snoop Dogg would have been probably been cheaper than Ice Tea at this point in 2000. Yeah, Ice Tea had been pretty big. Um, very established at this point. What's What's interesting about this, and we'll, we'll talk about this now, and we'll probably come up again when we do our next review, but um, this budget was 1.4 million, as we've discussed, and it's exactly the same budget for the, the follow-up, Back to the Hood. Mm. The production is ten times better in that film. Yeah. Uh, which, again, we'll talk about, but the score, the way it looks, the, the acting, the cast, everything else. And there isn't, there isn't really a name in it other than like one sort of cameo from someone. Um, so, yeah, this is not a great movie. It's definitely the worst in the franchise, I would say. Paul Warwick is kind of a bit of a cameo in his own franchise this time. Ice-T starts off being one of the main... I'm, names in it. I'm definitely going to say Warwick probably after this film wrapped probably did start looking at his own career a little bit and go hmm how's it where has it got to yeah I mean let's have a look at some of the trivia but but to be honest with you we are going to be positive about Warwick and everything else next time round in the next film yeah, totally. review so you know uh, this was the last movie to be released by Trimark Pictures full stop which doesn't surprise it me it doesn't say how much it made um, they tried to release it very closely to St. Patrick's Day, which probably indicates it was very rushed, uh, which it certainly felt that, that way as well. Um, and it says, The director of Leprechaun 3 and 4, Brian Trenchard, uh, pitched his idea for what the fifth movie should have been. He says it would have been the Leprechaun finding his way into the White House. Um, his version would have sent. Would have done that? His, he said his version would have sent the leprechaun infiltrating uh, an oafish but well-meaning presidential family uh, as a political satire of the Clinton era. But it wasn't they, the studio didn't feel comfortable with that, so they went with another lesser-known director and made this pile of shit, Gav. Um, and let's see what the director has done before and after this as well, shall we? Yeah, uh, then we're getting out of this one. And then we're done. So <laughs> that's word very, of the strange. It's quite quite a short review. Bill Murray's already wrestling around. Bill the Murray's just like, don't eat. Bill came in early and he said, "I thought I'd come in early because I knew you were doing that corn five. And I said, "I know, Bill. I know." He said, "I watched it last night, and to be honest, you should probably just cut it out and I'll just jump in." I said, "I can't. Dan wants me to do it." Well, he he drove me to uh, Farno actually, so okay. yeah. anyway, I could get here. So. Directed by Rob Spira, who's gone on to do episodes of Criminal Minds, uh, Supernatural, um, 
Fathers and Sons. Uh, he did a movie called Sexual Predator in 2001. Wow. Um, he did a... <laughs> Here we go. He did a movie called Stray Bullet in 1998. So he's obviously referencing his own film by calling one of the rappers Stray Bullet. Stray Bullet's an okay name for a 90s thriller. Yeah. Action thriller. But the guy's done really nothing and other than a few TV shows and the TV shows aren't that great apart from Criminal Minds and Supernatural. So... The last thing he actually did was a TV show in 2017. He's done nothing since. So it sounds like the guy's kind of wrapped up his career, really. And I'm not surprised, because there was no sense of direction in this at all. It was Ice-T talking nonsense by someone who'd written crap. And it was Warwick Davis rhyming silly lyrics that were crap. And all of that against the backdrop of some terrible acting. They could have at least cast... I would have forgiven the actors acting skills if they could rap if they'd have cast some people who could rap for the scenes because that's quite an important part where they're rapping to the audiences and stuff but that was even worse than their acting they were worse rappers than they were (laughs) actors weren't they they were terrible so guys we i'm gonna this might be my first thumbs down ever in 10 years it might that's be that's the most positive thing to come out of this We're I would both say, giving thumbs down I would say that I cannot give you any reason to watch this uh, movie and here's the big twist I give it thumbs up no I don't I can't really give you a reason to recommend this uh, I can't recommend yeah, it at I all. know I don't want to skip it go to the next one again. which is funny yeah go to the next film the if you're a completist and a maniac like me you will of course watch it but Leprechaun 5 in the hood if you're sensible like me you won't 2000 I would say it's our shortest review probably about 20 minutes that to, to talk about I don't know Bill do you want to get us the fuck out get of into here. some world of the strange activity put that down a second and come over it right thank you let's do it hi welcome back to world of the strange It's word of a stream. It's one of the songs. Hello. Hello. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Uh, He's not drinking this time. No. It's Easter. He said chocolate this time. He's got chocolate chocolate milk. Good lad. I think there's probably something in that. Hmm. Uh, Well, Easter. We know what happens at Easter, don't we? Jesus. Zombie Jesus. Resurrection. Eggs. All that kind of stuff. Yeah. Where where did Easter eggs and that come from? Uh, it must have been someone giving a present. I do remember but, but, this. But what's but, that got to do with Jesus coming back from I think being it's dead? To do, I think it might be something pagan related. Why didn't he come out a third time? Like, why did he, he just might keep do, coming yeah. out? He might do. Well, why does he leave it so long? That was quite short succession, wasn't it? He's killed and come back yeah, out. Yeah, but he might, he might be like making a grander entrance this time. But if he can come out once, he should come out again. Yeah, but like I said, he might. Alright. Wait for the day. There's that guy who believes he is Jesus. He's waiting for us to be totally woke so he can go, great, I can actually come out and just show everybody who I am. And we don't know that yet because we haven't seen his third coming, second coming. That was a, no, what was that, first coming? What coming is it? I have no idea. The, fir- the second, they, people say How the second coming is now. How many times Jesus come? So it's the first one, the first coming would have been stop him coming. coming in such first a... coming is him oh, coming out the hole, oh, isn't it? So the second coming is him coming again. Yeah, so the second coming will be him. So we might back. see Jesus coming soon. I hope not. Right, let's get on he with this. He might be back from the dead, though. So I do of... apologise if anyone is religious and it's not us mocking or anything. I was just actually just saying. You know. Talking of religion. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I just want to know where did the eggs come from. We talking of to Jesus mm-hmm. and talking of resurrection. Yes. I've got a story. I've got a couple of stories, but the first one is linked to resurrection. No, not erection. I thought you could hear There's that. Erection. This is trouble in the room with me now. You can hear the little whispers I do, because sometimes you probably might listen back to an episode and go, I don't remember Gav saying that. Resurrection. You can hear me. So, <clears throat> here's the headline. And bear in mind the resurrection side here. A woolly mammoth meatball. Would you eat one? No. Okay. Well, why? Would, why? No. How? How? Isn't and And the meat got off... <laughs> A mammoth snack 
<laughs> no, <laughs> that, that? no, no, they, because they've been recreating it, haven't they, for idea and that, yeah. Yeah, a mammoth yeah. snack produced by an Australian company aims to transition a few billion meat eaters away from eating conventional or conventional animal protein by eating cultivated mammoth meat. So made in a lab, mammoth meat with what? A DNA of a mammoth? Yes. A meatball has been made from the recreated flesh of it's the long extinct woolly mammoth as part of a project to demonstrate the potential of growing cells from f uh, sorry grown flesh from cells the, does the do you think the human body is going to be able to digest that you know well it would have been it's tested be, i guess to be honest i went to a vegan restaurant earlier recently had vegan macaroni and cheese and yeah, the shits were eaten yeah. <laughs> So, you know... <laughs> so my body didn't go very well vegan. So maybe it might a mammoth go better with mammoth. Yeah, maybe a mammoth meatball would do you better. Than some it nice might do me worse, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, so the company is called VOW, V-O-W. It's an Australian company, as I mentioned. Um, so, you know, they're against slaughtering animals um, on a large scale, scale sort of livestock um, scale. So, still you know, with the wildlife well. and the climate crisis, <coughs> they've said... I, I can understand, uh, yeah, yeah, I can understand that, what they're trying to do. They've already explored the potential with, of more than 50 alternative species. Do they eat them? I don't know, they probably do, serve them up in the canteen at lunchtime. I bet it's cheaper, isn't it? Tracy, the uh, dinner lady, like, what, meatballs? What, do you have mammoth meatballs today, or velociraptor testicles? Mammoth or horse? Horse, please. Cow, horse, or mammoth? Zebra. We've got zebra out the back. Tracy, we, tra it's Tracy two. I'm Tracy one. Listen. We've got zebras out the back still. I do you a nice crocodile sandwich. You want one of them? A bit of cheese in there. Be nice. It's vegan cheese. Bit used, of crocodile. There used to be an exotic uh, restaurant in Guildford that sold all the. I've eaten crocodile yeah. in Australia. Um, so they've already done this with more than fifty different species, including buffalo, crocodile, kangaroo, peacock. And several different types of fish. Well, they're making jerky. Meatball, but right. just different foods in general. Okay. But this time, they've got an idea of mammoth meatballs. Uh, mammoth We balls. chose the woolly mammoth because it's a symbol of diversity loss and also a symbol of climate change. They thought it would become extinct due to hunting by humans and the warming of the world after the last ice age. <laughs> That's a bit deep. I mean, you just want some meatballs to eat quickly. You're not going to start going in through the, the, the fucking Sorry, I, deakness of I this. I only eat woolly well, mammoth meatballs because I'm, you know, really yeah, well, I'm hungry. To change. I just want to eat. Well, we've only got uh, regular meatballs. Well, I won't eat them. Yeah. If it's spaghetti meatballs, <coughs> it's got to be mammoth meatballs for me. Is, 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 is the company, like, doing okay? Are people eating them? It's, it's still an experimental stage. I bet it is. The professor, Professor Wolvenhang, this is a horror movie. That's a good thing. Professor Wolventang took the DNA sequence for mammoth myoglobin, a key muscle protein which gives the meat its flavour, and then filled in the gaps in the DNA using elephant DNA. This is a fucking horror movie. This is, are you actually telling me this the idea of a horror movie should come <laughs> out good, soon? It's a good one, isn't it? Um, the Professor Wolventang says, it was particularly easy and fast It's a process. body horror. Mutations. They did this in just a couple of weeks. Why is it? Why is it only taking two weeks to do this? <laughs> they've been practicing this for years. And then now they've revealed, oh, we did it in two weeks. Yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, the professor said, the, man. the professor said initially, our first idea was let's reproduce dodo meat, the bird that went extinct about a hundred years ago. But that was very hard to do, as many of the DNA sequences just didn't exist. We didn't have enough. Um, leftover dodo but weirdly frozen mammoth climate change etc again we're finding more and more of these around the world so let's get some DNA let's make a nice mammoth meatball despite the work that's gone into it nobody has yet had the honour of being the first person to eat a mammoth meatball so they haven't got to the point where they're able to sort of serve one up on a plate yet so mm. we don't because we don't know how our immune system would react when we eat it will gav probably be a guinea pig for that when you go <laughs> why me get them balls in my mouth um if we did eat it it might do something bad to us because our bodies have changed That's what I'm saying. over thousands of years 
we believe the best way to do to, to test this is to invent the meat look for cells that are easy to grow that are really tasty and nutritious then mix and match those cells and create tasty meat that our bodies can mix and match until they find the right solution which our bodies can digest without having the shits for five years straight it might be what wiped out some of the cavemen just wearing a Eat nappy a constantly what killed the cavemen uh, they ate mammoth meatballs and got the shits till they, they died shit themselves to death that's what happened to warwick davis on the set of it was warwick. close it warwick. was close Warwick Davis had some mammoth meatballs and got the shits. So that's probably what Warwick Davis said the whole time. How was it? Warwick? It was close. I had to run to the toilet. So that's uh, our first story. Okay. okay. So keeping with dinosaurs, second story, but also moving away from the resurrection, you know, of the meat, like we talked about, but also moving into sort of the spring. Chickens are sort of linked. The sun's shining. Sun's shining. It's springtime. Flowers are popping up. Here's the headline for you. Chickens with dinosaur feet have been grown in labs by scientists what, 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 scientists stop stop fucking around just be farmers <laughs> but i can see though if if scientists are helping us in the world when if i've seen you know things went down or trying to stop us eating so many cows and stuff i understand because obviously the uh, the emittance of gas and stuff um from their bottoms of the cows is very bad for the ozone layer and all this sort of stuff um so I can stand the way the science is doing it, but at the same time I'm a little bit like, do you really need to? So what are they doing? They're baking dinosaur feed chickens. So they've been experimenting on chicken uh, embryos. Because they're feet, are they dinosaurs? Well, as we right? know, uh, dinosaurs evolved into birds. Um, we've only learnt this in the last 30 or 40 years. But we love eating chicken, don't we? We love eating dinosaur. I mean chicken. Um, remember that Doug McCall movie where they just ate dinosaurs? Yeah, no, just go, go, let's grab one, eat it, we'll bring it in, we'll just eat it. Just Welcome, like let's have a feast. Okay. What is this? Plesiosaurus. Well, we've On never the tried submarine. this. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Eat it, all right. So, um, yes, they've been fucking around with chicken embryos, still in their eggs, and they've caused their foot bones to change shape to resemble dinosaur feet. Modern birds have opposable toes, while T-Rexes and other dinosaurs did not. So, they basically... My question is why? Why not? He sounded like <laughs> Jeff Goldblum then from Dress Up Park. My uh, question is, well, well, why? why? Why would you do this? Uh, yeah, there's not really much to this story other than that's what they've done. They've made a few chickens that have dinosaur legs and feet. My question to you, guys, is what's going to happen next? Because if they, clearly we are looking at Jurassic Park style scenario here. I'm not talking about John Hammond opening a theme park, but I'm talking about them continuing to experiment until we probably will see a, li a dinosaur in our lifetime, like a, a version of what would have been around. We've got the DNA. We've got the science. Yeah, yeah, I Science guess. has come really far now. Hasn't I know. It? I know. Obviously, nowadays we can do like hologra holograms, which are really good and stuff. But yeah. But, and actually, talking to Jeff Goldblum, he did. There was a quote in the Jurassic Park movie, which was probably in the original novel, which is, "Just because we we can, does it mean that we should?" Um, yeah, I'm in Jeff's uh, camp Me too. here. Me too. So yeah, that was story two. Really, it's just to let you all know. It's more of a news update. Really, look out because there's some chickens out there with dinosaur feet. Imagine the drumstick on that. Can I get some, can I get a chicken drummer, please? Yeah, do you want um, T Rex? Yeah, Larry, Lo load the lorry. <laughs> beep 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 beep. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for that. It'd be like oh. Flintstones. <laughs> and then you can feel bad to the weight on that. You're gonna have to try and eat more. We've done that at a restaurant. You're like, oh, I'll just keep eating um, more. So it doesn't can I look get like a like T Rex um, leg, please? What do you want, love? Mammoth meatballs. Yeah. How many do you want? Three. Three mammoth meatballs and a T Rex leg, please. Yeah. Oh, fucking hell. Get the forklift truck. So that was story number two. Any thoughts on that one before we move on to the th final? We we did our thoughts. Jeff, Jeff's camp. That's Jeff. our thoughts. We're in, get, we're in Jeff's camp. How many stories you got? I got one more. Okay. Three is a magic number. This last one is just a general Easter celebratory sort of list of things. You know my lists. Mm -hmm. I know lists. And these are, this is nine disturbing... Well, it's, I won't do them all. Mm -hmm. But there are some disturbing facts here about Easter. Okay. So here we go. The word Easter. Any idea where it came from? Easter Islands? 
Yeah. It's it's got pagan roots. Okay. Uh, the word Easter comes from the pagan fertility god's name Iastro, as does the word estrogen, which symbolizes birth, renewal, and spring. Okay. So that's quite a cute one for you there. To start things off. Easter Bunny, got a little bit of a background on that. Again, it's pagan, so it seems like this is all quite pagan. Well, but then, then wasn't a lot of things taken from pagans' beliefs and thrown into I think, Christianity or something? I don't, I don't want to get stole. into it. Stole from lots of <clears throat> properties and created our own thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, this, I don't really know. How can we get loads of chocolate into, like, one month of the year we can get to eat loads of chocolate? It's just still from this, still from this, and still from this. Great. Kids, it's Easter. Here's some chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. Early English pagans worshipped rabbits due to their ability to procreate quickly uh, and in high abundance. So they literally turned... Uh, they literally loved rabbits because they just fuck loads and create loads of babies. And that's why the, the Easter bunny is a thing. Legend says that God... This is the pagan god turned into a giant rabbit at, at the spring equinox, and just fucked everybody, and created more and more people. So, imagine that. What? Like, imagine the end it's of the Wicker Man. It's another horror movie. Yeah, I imagine these people around a giant rabbit around this thing, fucked. and this person just evolving into this giant rabbit or whatever, like, and then yeah. going right, bend over, and it's all lined up and just bumming all these people, <laughs> going round. I'm the bumming bunny. Right. Oh, let's get in the rotating circle. Next up for the bunning bummy. <laughs> Bun bunning bummy. <laughs> the bumming bunny. You. Oh. The, the Easter bummy. I won't be bumming though because he's trying to make. Okay. So it's only going to be of the ladies. Yeah, I guess. The, the, so it's a giant. So the guys are sitting around eating Easter eggs. There's a giant bunny. Watch, so someone's there watching his wife be. Done. Loved in a making way by a giant bunny man. Yeah. yeah. I'm filled with you. I'm finished with you. A web, a web bunny. Next unto you. Yeah, it's just... Have you done Tracy yet? I don't know what, poor Tracy. She's getting it all to all the time today. Dinner lady. Yeah, but Tracy, you done. you got the dinner lady work tomorrow at nine. We've got to get back. Have you been filled up by the bunny? Right, let's go. So I've got a, a fact here which my wife was quite shocked about when I told her this one. So when you get your chocolate Easter bunny, yeah? And they're hollow, yeah? Mm. You know the ones? break the ears off don't you what do you start at the bum first who knows it's up to you how you do it but everyone knows I punch them yeah you punch them to break them. some people do that um, but the hollow chocolate Easter bunny do you know why it's hollow it's cheaper and just giving you a solid chocolate because when they were first produced they were solid and so many children broke their teeth <laughs> eating them by just biting into them and snapping teeth off they, they realised after about a year or so we probably need to sell these hollow because <clears throat> we're going to get sued. Uh, Easter eggs, uh, uh, did America, do they uh, have Easter eggs and stuff? Like chocolate yeah, eggs and things? Yeah. I, I've never really thought about it. There's most, I'm sure there's going to be some countries that are like, no, we don't do that. Um, I've never really thought about it. Um, in fact, it was children in the States that broke their teeth on them. Oh, okay. Um, so worldwide, wherever the chocolate eggs are produced today, come on, yeah. You can get the solid ones, but uh, they're little wee ones. Now, as we record today, it's Easter Sunday. It is right now. It is, it is our is, Sunday. Yeah, we've got we've got chocolates here, haven't we? We've got tons. We've got, we've got, I've got well, all my eggs. We've got some stuff left over from catering as well on, on set. I was about to grab some now, won't, because so I've been told by my lovely lady I shouldn't eat while we're podcast. Also, you might fall off your chair. Um, so, on an Easter Sunday, there is a, tra a tradition, an ancient tradition, of opening all the windows and the doors in the house on Easter Sunday... Uh, to clear out evil spirits that have been lurking in the shadows of your home over the winter time. Well, you've got all your windows open at the moment, well, some of them. Oh, uh, they're shut now, we're podcasting. All right, but it you've just had them sounds open. like they're bloody open because everyone's so loud. You've had them open, though. So that's good. So we're letting I let the, the demons out, out yeah. So, guys, on Easter Sunday, make sure you leave all your front doors open. Not while you go out, obviously. But no. Don't do that. If you come back, it might be a big bumming bunny. Or you sitting there going, bit waiting for you. Or your television has just been taken. I don't know why the bunnies now sound like an East End gangster. I've been waiting for you. Oh, mate. I've been waiting for you, mate. Come in here. Get um, your clothes off. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm the bunny. Uh, ancient Sumerians dyed their Easter eggs red. I'm the bunny. The one no that one bangs. knew for years why this. Right. For no one knew for years why this. It was mainly just because. They wanted to celebrate the blood that Jesus shed 
when he was executed. It all comes back to Jesus. Weird. Hot cross buns. They've got crosses on them because Jesus died on the cross. That's weird. Why? It's weird. But they taste beautiful. I love a hot cross bun. It still doesn't make any sense. The last fact is what I think you're going to enjoy this last one because it involves Nazis. Yeah. So during Easter time, uh, marshmallows were used to kill war war crimin- Nazi war criminals. Quick, throw the marshmallows at them! <laughs> oh, what is this? Oh, what is this? Ah, I've heard this goopy uh, stuff is well, all me, over me! Let me tell you the story. So fake marshmallows made of compressed sponge were used by Nazi hunters in the uh, in the early 80s. So this is quite recent. So they poisoned them, gave them to the Nazis as a treat during Easter, but then they expanded and ruptured their stomachs and killed them. Ha ha! Happy <laughs> Easter! Given... Oh, thank I'm you! Pleased. It's very nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. ah. That'll teach you, you Nazi bastards. So yeah, they they used uh, Easter marshmallows that, that were marshmallow poisoned, and they expanded in their stomachs because they were made with some sponge and poison and ruptured them. Oh, imagine that your stomach ache gets worse and worse, you said it worse, and you're sitting on the toilet going, "I can poop it out, no." And they're like, "I'm actually pooping out my intestines here." Well, you shouldn't have been a Nazi then, especially in the eighties. Actually, it all finished forty years ago, you bastard. Um, so there's my weird Easter facts: some dinosaur feet and some mammoth meatballs. And some German accents from you. Some very good German accent, yeah. <laughs> um, Apologies to any German <laughs> listeners, but not any apologies to our Nazi listeners, because you shouldn't be listening to us. Fuck off. Gov, happy Easter, Bill. Happy Easter to you, happy my friend. Happy Easter, everybody. Yes, yes, yes. Wait, anything you want to... What, Bill? It's, it's just chocolate milk, yeah? He says it is. He's got it all around his mouth. I'm not sure that's chocolate milk. Right, anyway, let's get out of here, Bill. Can you just give us the little, uh... <laughs> Ow. That's all the time we've got for this week on World of Next week, though, give me Ira. Hairless pets. Weird. A legend from the past has finally awakened. And he only wants one thing. Okay, maybe two things. Leprechaun, back to the hood. Leprechaun 6, back to the herd. The hood. Oh, sorry. I still want it. It's back to the hood. Back to the hood. When Emily Woodrow and her friends happen on a treasure chest full of gold coins, they fell to the heed the warnings of a wise old psychic who has foretold that they would encounter trouble with a very nasty and protective leprechaun. Ah! Did you like what I did there, then? I liked that one. You steal me gold. I steal your soul. Oh. Imagine Liam Neeson, um... Was the, as a leprechaun. leprechaun. What if Liam Neeson played leprechaun? Yeah, and they just made him small with CGI, and he'd be like, Listen, I have a very particular set of skills. You've, you've stolen me gold. A set of skills. You've stolen me gold, so I'll break your kneecaps. That would be bad, yeah. That would be bad. You would actually genuinely be terrified if you... You're like, please take the gold back, Mr. Leprechaun. I'm incredibly sorry. It's a really angry... Take it. It could be called Taken as angry well. Angry Leprechaun. It could be take, Taken 4. <laughs> N- Liam na- Liam's now a Leprechaun. <laughs> you think you've seen it all. <laughs> Liam Neeson is the Leprechaun. And he's on the phone going, I heard you've got me gold. Give it back. They took my daughter. <laughs> they took my wife. First they now took they his take daughter. his gold. <laughs> I want to watch it. First they took his daughter. Then they took his gold. That's <laughs> nice daughter, wife, gold. What are they taking the third one? Him? Yeah, his daughter comes and gets him. First they say. take his daughter. Then they take his wife. Then they take himself. And he gets confused. But then he comes back and they take his gold this time. Next time they're taking something else. His virginity. The piss. 
So yeah, this is Leprechaun 6, Back but to the Hood. we joking aside, this film's better than the last one. Yeah. It's on the same budget. Now, why is that, Daniel? Well, well let's get into it. So it's 2003, it's three years later. Uh, 1.4 million, again. Uh, but approximated budget. We do still, with both films, we do not know how much they made. It just has estimated budget. No, so mm. we don't know takings. Now, my theory which Gav agrees with is that a lot of that money went on iced tea in the last one um, because it certainly wasn't visible on the screen whereas this one uh, the right from the off and we'll get into the intro in a moment but right from the very first seconds of the film opening you can you can see production it's crisp it's yeah. clear the acting is good in this well it, it starts with narration and a map and so I was straight away like, animation as well yeah so I was straight away I was like oh Someone's someone's not lazy. Someone's actually done some work. Mm -hmm. It's like okay, and so you see it straight away. So we get into they actually do something which they they may have done in the, some of the other movies, but they talk about the origin of the leprechaun, the people, the little people that lived in Ireland, and why this particular leprechaun that's been in all these movies is the bad one. It was banished, and it's now after everyone's gold. It became greedy, whereas the others are all sort of succumbed and were nice and okay and we get this done in the style as gav says there's like a map then some narration and some animation and it just is it, it just feel like, okay this is actually it feels a lot new in fact it feels new within 2003 it feels like something they would have done even 10 years after that and probably still do now it's quite an interesting start it grabs you doesn't it straight away mm -hmm. you're like oh okay yeah, yeah. It, it lets you know that. Well, it lets you know it's a better film if you've just come out from watching Leprechaun Five. <clears throat> if you've just come out from watching Apocalypse Now, you might not be so inclined to think so. But it is better than Leprechaun Five. It is. Which was nice because I was like, "Holy fuck! How am I going to do this for another fucking movie?" Yeah. And as I, I love you to bits, but like, come on, man! And I even said to you, "Can you just do it?" And you said, oh, Fucking paid for yeah, it. You I, fucking watched I had it. to it buy like, what? this what? one because couldn't find it to stream or anything like that. But um, well, a year later, a year later. No, what have I got? A year later. What yeah, that's then? because. So we open. So that was the uh, intro, and we start with a drunken oh, priest. So you are right. We no, do skip, but you're just jumping no, slightly no, ahead. That's my all. notes have popped down before me. Um, yeah. So a drunken priest um, sees a rainbow. Um, I've got a vicar fighting Warwick. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. A drunken priest fights the leprechaun on a construction site. And it's shot, like, okay. Yeah, there's a magical rainbow that appears. Quite good special effects. The, 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 the vicar who's playing the actor is doing a job. He, he's quite into the role. It, it's fine. Yeah. Warwick's makeup looks really good. It's in daylight as well, and it looks really good. I've written a note here that says... And I hope this word is, you know, copyrighted now. Lepkido. Because Warwick Davis does some leprechaun kung fu moves on this priest. Lepkido sounds fine for me. Lepkido. So he sort of ducks under a shovel, does a kick in the balls, and they end up having this bit of a scrap in this... There's a proper score. There's proper camera work. Mm -hmm. Oh, straight away, my notes go, what's going on? There's choreography. <laughs> there's blocking. What, what's happening here? Yeah. I don't understand. Um, and essentially this fight, take the, where, where this fight takes place is quite relevant as well because it takes place on what, what they're trying to create a community centre this priest is responsible for because um, again the hood is run down as has been told many many times um, and they're trying to create a community centre uh, which is why there's this construction site to bring the community back together and do stuff for the young people somewhere where the young people can go and hang out and be creative and not hang out on street corners selling drugs and having guns and stuff um and that comes up that's kind of what one of the threads of this really is trying to bring the community together um so yeah the priest gets killed by the leprechaun using his lepkido take that right kick to the bollocks there or something like that uh and then he dies um it's a nice set piece it's lit well it's staged really well and then we cut to like a year later and it's kind of your typical sort of mm, mid to late 90s kind of a, a hip hop not a hip hop movie um, they'd say urban movie I don't really like yeah, the term urban one of those so <clears throat> when you After Boys in the Hood came out yeah so After Boys in the Hood and a couple of other movies came out that became the sort of the genre that people mm. 
were interested in. And, and at that point, um, everyone knows that film very well. So when it goes to this, at first, my first thought was, oh, it feels a bit cheap in outside out here, because a minute ago we were very well staged and lit, and now it's just natural lighting outside. But then I, was, then I all of a sudden remembered those films and went, oh, no, this, was, this is, just looks like those films. Yeah. But at no point do I think any of this looks cheap. That looks just like one of those films. Yeah, and, and this is 2003, so it's homaging films that were made a year, ten years before. It, and it probably wasn't homaging them, I'm probably being a bit nice to that, but it certainly looks like that. And, you know, those films tapped into a genre that, especially for people of colour, it's like all of a sudden they were being, seeing themselves represented on screen. They were hearing music and, and stuff that just represented them, and there was some incredible, you know, Boys in the Hood is a fantastic film. There's a lot of movies out in that genre that but yeah this t taps into that and we get to meet some characters uh who are infinitely better than the characters in the last movie as well uh we've got three main characters um in this one aside from the leprechaun we've got emily uh we've got rory um we've got the comet relief jamie um who is actually quite funny as well like again no one really annoys me that much in this it's yeah you know they're, they're acting enough that he's the comet relief but he's not like getting under my skin with his jokes and his comic relief do you know what i mean mm. um rory is the sort of a hero the sort of anti-hero i guess with the motorcycle and again that's quite different normally in these kind of movies the lead uh, black male would be driving you know a, a caddy or something like that he's got a badass motorbike and that's pretty different um and it's just something slightly a it's still an epical movie, but there's something about this one that's got a bit of polish on it that elevates it just that much more. And again, like you said, Gav, it's probably because <clears throat> we're coming off the back of an Epicorn 5. No, but it is, though. There's more. There's, someone's put the effort into there. There's, it's it's the less is more technique again, and there's just a different layers to it. Like you were saying, there's all of a sudden there'll be a little bit of, like... It's almost like the director's gone to the character. But it's interesting, so we looked up. The director didn't really do anything with this. He, no. hasn't, he doesn't really have a career. He's finished. Uh, yeah. But but how it was, though, it's almost like the director's gone up to him and had a little chat with him and said, yeah, play with this. Gone off, and they've what, come up with these little whips and these little gags themselves. So I'm pretty sure it was probably in the scripts, and if it was, that's very well written script, and they managed to get that out of the paper onto page but like you say those little layers of little gags jokes with side characters are not in it just like going up to them with like a quick comment of someone the bit later on where it's like um the guy having a medium reading the psychic and they've just burst in he says and they want to say something he says what about my what about my father and and he, he says what about my dead wife and, and the dead says he'll be she'll be dead right here you should be dead, dead tomorrow. Till tomorrow and pulls him out as well and he sits down <laughs> that just silly stuff that works. It's, it's also casting, getting yeah. those characters, or actors that can play those roles. Yeah, and, and, and it feels like the just, characters have got their own backstory, you know. So we've got it's Rory. It's totally shocking. Rory is a a weed seller, a drug dealer, and he's a nice guy at heart, but he wants to make his money. And him and Emily have got this sort of. Um, him and Emily have got this. Sort he's of, the dog chicken. <laughs> they've got their sort of backstory where they haven't. A relationship potentially but she doesn't agree with him selling drugs to make money and he's like well i ain't, I ain't never gonna change you can't take me out of the hood and all this kind of stuff and then you've got jamie who's the weed smoker he's like your chris tucker from friday mm. he's got all the all the good lines but he loves being stoned all the time yeah. blazing trees left right and to the point that him and his dog about all the time him and his dog are sort of and he's like you get it none of this weed it's ain't for uh, you and the dog's it's like you know. it's so silly yeah. but you know it, it's kind of it's meant well and it works well now being a drug dealer rory also has beef with a guy a character he's the, he's a bully yeah he's like the neighborhood debo from friday isn't yeah, he? we talked about him yesterday we were um and he's got a gang and one of the gang is played by sticky fingers who is a rapper from a group called onyx for anybody that knows onyx from the early 90s slam slam da 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 da, da let the boys be boys um so it's quite fun to see him in this. He's very menacing. He always is. He's got a great presence, whatever. He's got a very raspy voice. Uh, so Rory has this beef with this Watson character and his gang, and um, uh, he is bullied by Sticky Fingers, who really wants to fight Rory hand-to-hand, -hand and they don't. But then Rory rides off on his motorcycle, comes back and does his signature move, which is baseball back to the head as he's driving past you on a motorcycle so we've established there's a bad guy with a little gang and there's a, a another dude and he's always all of a sudden started this thing so we know at some point there's going to be some this is going to come back this. 
Uh, so uh, what it also establishes is that although Rory, Emily might think Rory's a bit of a bad guy, there is a badder guy as well. Um, so again, we're already like more, much more layers than the last movie. We haven't even brought the leprechaun into it yet. So that's kind of where we are really, isn't it? Do, do, you, reckon, do you reckon they promoted it with um, sticky fingers? No, it, it wasn't on any of the mm. posters or anything it like that. It obviously does have a big thing, but yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, Emily's dreams of, because uh, she works in a nail salon, she's got dream, bigger dreams of perhaps one day owning her own nail salon as well. So yeah, so we know we've got these characters with this backstory, the nail salons, drug dealing, uh, and there's friendship. They feel like they've been friends for a long time. Now at this point, I've been talking for a while, and my note, next note does sum up what you guys are probably thinking, which is, is this a leprechaun movie? Because so far it's just a, a quite an interesting tale about three friends growing up in the hood and they're all going well, in different generally, directions. Generally, a good horror movie, you get sucked into something which isn't really horror. It can be, obviously, but it's not the crux of the uh, crux, or crux, 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 crux of um, uh, um, actual horror movie. It's um, not like Jeepers Creepers, where the creeper is the, obviously the horror, but the horror could be something else where someone's lost a child, like Ray Wise, it or something like that. You know. Um, so a good horror movie, you get into that, then all of a sudden that horror comes in, you're like, oh my god, but yeah, point, you're invested in the character and the story, and this, you're right, Dan, it has the same. Yeah. They, they have some further conversations, uh, we find out that Jamie the stoner is trying to hit on a girl called Lisa, who's kind of part of their group as well, um, you know, they're, they're just basically very poor, all of them, they all need, much like the last film, they need a break they need some money they need some help um what are they going to do when is when's life going to change for them all um they go to visit a fortune teller the girls as a bit of a laugh and this fortune teller sort of knows their names although she gets them slightly wrong and she tells them that there is a huge wealth in their future and they're both obviously very excited but she says but don't accept it because nothing good will come of it and you'll just feel nothing but suffering and pain. And they're like, well, hang on a minute. What? You can't just tell us that we're going to get loads and loads of money and then it's all going to be horrible and awful. Obviously, she's referring to a little Irish fellow with his gold. Indeed. Isn't she? <coughs> uh, Jamie is getting high with his dog, as we talked about earlier. Uh, and uh, he finds something unusual in the weed. A little four-leaf clover. In fact, there's lots of four-leaf clovers in his weed, and he doesn't understand. So he goes to visit Rory, their friend who he bought the weed off of, and complain. And Rory's like, well, bring me some four-leaf clovers, and I'll give you your money back. So he's quite a good dealer, because he'll, you know, if you've got a problem, he'll refund you. Apparently. He's very established. <laughs> <laughs> However, while this is happening, quite a funny moment happens here, where a white fella... Uh, comes over and tries to be quite uh, hood. And we have already established earlier on there's a point when um, uh, the the N-word, which everyone we know what that yeah. is, is uh, back in a lot of those sort of films, and obviously in the hip-hop language of the gangster rap era, that this was commonly used a lot more. It's, you know, everyone knows it. Um, uh, they, they, one of them says, hey, my ninja. And he says, what are you talking about? And he just sort of says, we can't sort of say that. Or, it, it, not even a PC sort of way, just like we, we've moved on from that or something. It's, it's just, it's just it's a really funny, funny. It's just... moment where he says, no, we don't say N-word. He says, we say ninja now. Yeah, my, hey, my ninja. And he says, uh, okay, he says, well, I'm saying it to everybody. So they just start saying, what's and up, my ninja? It's just a weird comical thing in it, which is quite fun and playful. So, But we've established this. Yeah. So we go back to what's going on. Yeah, because that then ties into this white sort of preppy guy who shows up. And he says, hey, Rory, what's up, my man? And Rory's like, yo, what's up? And he's like, oh, I want you to get some more of that chronic, please. And he's sort of trying to be really hood with it. And he says, all right, well, you know the price. So they switch the money in the weed. And he says, uh, yeah, a lot of my clients love this chronic too. And I'll be hitting you up for more. He says, peace out, my... And he actually says the N-word. And the whole basketball court and everybody around him just turns around and <laughs> looks at this guy. You even get, like, the record scratch. Don't you like that? Yeah. Um, and he says, and there's about to be some trouble. But then he, Rory stops it by saying, look, don't say that word. In fact, don't, no one says that word anymore. We all say ninja so that's just like again a little bit of a layered joke and a little bit of writing it's just fun very funny Indeed. good stuff yep um cut to the girls decide let's have a barbecue on the construction site as you do 
the boys are coming. We cook up some booze. Booze of food. major erections. Oh, that joke comes out every single time. While they're on this building site having this barbecue, Rory and Emily go off for a little chat. They discuss their past. She doesn't like his drug dealing ways. There's definitely still chemistry between them. It's just weed. He borrowed money. Just dealing weed. He's just dealing weed. But he borrowed money off her because her parents left her some money, and he borrowed money off her as well. Um, and he hasn't yet. He's yet to pay her back, and he won't. She won't accept his drug money, as she says. And while they're arguing. She falls into a hole. It's a nest. Yeah, and this nest is like really atmospheric almost. It actually is not kind of a arachnophobia or gremlins or something. Do you know what I mean? It actually feels a bit like this is a thing. With this, there's an actual music score to give atmosphere. Rory says, wait there, I'll get some rope. And while he's off to get the rope, she finds a door that leads to a secret cave that leads to a tunnel. So we've got this whole like set fast and furious are outside how's that worried it's because it's easter sunday it's daytime it's the countryside it's sunny people like to drive fast up and down so yes we've got this whole set that's been built underground which lisa's which emily is exploring um and while she's exploring each of that she finds uh well the leprechaun yeah find the god here we go. And they go, hey, great, we can split this. This is brilliant. There's a load of money. We need money. Let's do it. She's very kind to her friends because she's found a lot of money. They establish... Tell, tell us one of, the, one of the friends is like, you're not having... You're not going to buy weed with it. Don't tell what? him what to do. If you're going to give him a quarter of a million like, dollars... So they all go off and start spending their money. The girls go on a shopping spree and they buy new outfits. Spending they get, money montage. Yep. Yeah, they get their nails done. They buy their clothes. So, yeah, Rory's got all the bling. He's treating his girlfriend to lots of bling in clothes as well, but he doesn't look happy. But they've all got these gold coins and they're pawning them one at a time and making loads of money. And, of course, Jamie's been told, don't spend your money on weed. But what does he do? He goes up to Onyx but and he buys two sacks, like garbage bags, giant garbage bags full of weed. And he's walking down through the neighbourhood like, yeah. yeah. But, yes, bong display. He has a bomb display. Um, but this is not long after this is when the dude's like, oh, he, he um, have a bong or whatever, and he goes and does that, and he smokes away. And how does Warwick appear? So Warwick Davis, or the leprechaun, has been uh, pop- popping up in trees and behind cupboards all the way through this, because they're spending his money. So he's tracking them. He can, you know, he, he's addicted. He's attracted to his gold. Yeah. So he, he's, he's been on their scent all the way through. He comes to the house party that Jamie's putting on. Um, Jamie's, as he said, he's got a little bong museum. This is my first one. This is my favourite. Or this is one from Japan that does this. And, he's, and this guy's like, oh, and he's like, look, use any of them, smoke my weed. I've got loads of weed, loads of money. So he goes off. And while he's enjoying the party, Warwick shows up, knocks on the bedroom door. And the guy opens the door and he's like, man, this weed is good. Because he sees Warwick. Yeah. He says, come in, little man. Tell me how you're living. And he says, what are you doing? I haven't smoked a good pipe in years. And he packs it out for him and he gives him the bong. And Warwick Davis's acting is so funny in this moment because he, he looks like he's really stoked. And then we talked about this off air, but we'll talk about it now. There, there was a someone whose job was to teach Warwick Davis how to look like he was smoking a bong properly. Yeah, it's amazing. Bong handler. Bong handler. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, my last uh, thing I worked on was um, Back to the Hood. Uh, you might have seen it. It's a leprechaun movie. Um, yeah, basically worked with Warwick Davis uh, on set, just handling props. Yeah, what were you doing? Guns? You'd, I suppose you'd also be um, a bong supervisor. Yeah. Hmm. Prop, but bong. Let's say bong, because it's funnier, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, bong supervisor. Um, so, yeah, uh, Warwick Davis gets absolutely stoned. And... Um, there's a funny scene in the kitchen, which in lesser films wouldn't work, where Jamie is making sandwiches because he's stoned, and the leprechaun is walking around behind him stoned, and he ends up getting shut in the fridge. It's a silly scene, and it's definitely this movie is definitely not scary. It's more of the comical. We know the the gore is going to be coming at some point, mm. but at this point, it's all quite comical mm. and lots of fun. Um, so yeah, there we go. Uh, he's locked in the fridge. He killed the guy who was gave, gave him the bong. Of course, we forgot about that. The bong kill. Yeah, he killed him, yeah. Stabs him in the guts with the bong. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, he's down in the fridge hiding away. The police show up. Mm-hmm. 
and they arrest everybody, mainly Rory and Jamie, uh, and they're saying that, um, well, they discover the bodies, well, don't they? Now, a body at a house party with a bong stabbed in it, it's quite, you know, it's not a little thing, but they also find a couple of garbage bags full of weed as well. Yeah. So Rory's questioned, Jamie gets arrested, the girls go off and pawn more coins, and in fact, Rory's girlfriend gets a gold tooth made out of the gold from one of the gold coins. So I think that's probably going to come back to bite her in the arse at some point. Yeah. Um, Kung Fu Cop. There is a Kung Fu Cop. We'll get to that in a minute. But Rory further angers the opposing gang by selling weed to one of their regular clients. And they're very annoyed by this because he's so he says, you know, Watson, I think the, the baddies leader who says, he's on our turf, he's encroaching on our turf here. I'm, he says it in a much more menacing way. We're going to have to sort him out, but it'll come. Mm. We'll get our revenge on him. So he's, you know, he's bringing down the wrath of this other gang as well. Let's talk about the scene with the oiling up the larger lady first. There's a lady being uh, 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 massaged. Um, the lady's going to massage her. She's very happy. She thought she was going <laughs> home. Gus got his legs crossed. He's really into this. She thought she was going home. She's like, no, no, you've got one more job to go. And she looks in and it's a larger lady. So she's like, this is more time consuming because it's a larger lady. It's a large area. So this is Emily's up. last shift in the sal- salon. She, she wants she, to, I she's get about to buy her own salon using the leprechaun gold. So it's kind of like the old boss just digging it in, I think, really. Yep. And um, she's asked to go and do it, so she goes and does it, but then she has to step away. She steps away briefly. What for? I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. Cause the main it doesn't thing matter, is, because what happens next is brilliant. Leprechaun steps in the room, and the lady on the bed says, hurry up, oh, you know, I've got lots of knots, and use the coconut butter that I like. That shit is the bomb. So Lep just jumps on it. And he starts using his little... she likes that, his <laughs> little green spike of fingers. Yeah, and then he starts dancing a jig on her back. They've even got... Um, because he doesn't wear shoes, so they put little special prosthetic feet on him, little clawed feet, and she's like, oh, yeah, honey. She absolutely loves it. Uh, he walks on her back, like I said, um, and then he ends up just strangling her as, yeah, that's as the Emily walks in. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a fight in the hairdressers, because it leads out to a hairdresser, so it's a hairdresser's massage yeah. salon. Um, and, and Rory steals the gold. Rory does steal the gold. Well... Before that happens, they, they all get together and say, look, there is, this leprechaun is coming to get the gold. We need to collect it all back up, stop spending it, and we need to give it back to him, otherwise he's going to kill us all. All right? This is what the fortune teller said. You know, she did say, with great, with great fortune comes great sorrow. So this is it. This is what's happening. But like you say, Rory skedaddles. Because they find out yep. that the chest that the gold is in is magic as well because if you put if you empty the chest out and close the lid it refills so it's almost like you've got this infinite supply of wealth however you've also got the little leprechaun chasing you down yeah so i'd rather not have that yeah thanks very much um so yeah he steals the gold uh leprechaun we just get loads of scenes of leprechauns fighting different people and killing different people until we get to a great moment where kung fu cop this is what Gav referred to. So the leprechaun comes across Rory and Emily, who've been arrested, uh, because they've got this, this gold it, treasure it has on them. Someone else has happened. Sparrow goes a bit full and smoke, and leprechaun just steps, uh, drives into with the cop car. He's been using a leg to help well, him. Well, that, that's just before the country cop. Of course, because yeah. that's the cop car he takes. So he, he steps out along. It's almost like a Terminator movie. You get mm. leprechaun sort of walking through the fog towards them, and the cops sort of say... Is this Halloween? What's going on here? Yeah. And they end up... The leprechaun kills it's, one of them. It's all authentic reactions of what you would do if you saw a leprechaun. It's like, what's going on in this movie? It's made properly. It's good, good fight choreography. He rips off the cop's leg. After he does come through on him and then just rips his leg off. There's use of a green screen, but it looks very good CGI. Um, and then Rory and Emily escape on the motorcycle. Mm-hmm. So Leprechaun uses the amputated leg. To, is a, a block like in Indiana Jones. He has a little wooden block. Police car. Mm-hmm. He chases them down. It's great. Um, and this time they're in... They give the gold to the bad guy. They do. Well, they get into Jamie's Cadillac. And they do is, that because they know Leprechaun's going to go after the bad guy, don't they? They do. 
and they get into Jamie's Cadillac, which is one of these bouncing Dr. Dre-style Cadillacs. Leprechaun is underneath it. I'm still so shocked how well produced this film is, but yes. So they use that trick where they bounce the bounce the car up and down, like you've seen in Dr. Dre's videos, but this time they're doing it to try and kill the Leprechaun, who's clinging on as they're driving down the road. Um, before, just before this, the bad dude's beaten up by the Leprechaun. Yes, um, he his heart the out. leprechaun is machine gunned down by sticky fingers sticky in the fingers. crew, and um, that's when Lep- um, but he then kills all those guys, then gets under the car. It's the hydraulics. That's right. So they, the girls, th- that's how good they. When they get round round the corner, he flump comes flying off, and then he hears a phone rings. He turns around and finds a phone rings. Hello, and th- th- it's just a lady. Uh, she's she talks- was Watson's the leader's. He was just on the phone to her. Yeah, and she's like. Who's this? who's this? And he's like, well, who's this? And she's like, oh, how, what are you like? I, you know, and he's like, well, I think I've got a good body. I've got a nice smile. And she's like, oh, do you go to the gym? Do you reckon? And it's almost like they're ch- chatting each and other. And then she up. says, how, how, old, how tall are you? He says, I'm three foot. She's like, three foot? And he's like, well, I make up for it in other areas. And then she hangs up on him. And he's like, hello? Oh. Hello? And it cuts. It's quite comical. It's funny. It is funny. They go to visit the fortune teller. That's the, what about my dead wife? Yeah, what yeah. about my dead wife? She'll still be dead tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And she says, yeah, look, I told you this was going to happen. But well, lo and behold, Leprechaun appears. They they do, oh yeah, they do, yeah. Then they go make the bullets, don't they? Well, yeah, he makes the clover-tipped bullets. Like silver t- silver bullets or whatever you'd make in silver the bullet, the movie. From the weed. Yeah. Meanwhile, the witch uses her Hadouken magical powerful fireballs on Leprechaun, and there's this amazing fight using quite good special effects between the Leprechaun and the witch. But she does. He kills her. But then we have a f- fight on the rooftop. Unfortunately, the rooftop fight's a little boring, and there's the two of them, and they go on. It goes on. They have a fight on the rooftop, then they go downstairs, then they come back and have a fight on the rooftop, then, then they go downstairs. Let's, <laughs> let's whittle it down to come what on, actually happens is they fight the Leprechaun, they knock his gold off into the wet cement and they think they've killed him then he flies back in on a rainbow and then this time they do knock him off because you can't kill the leprechaun but what you can do is put him in wet cement and then he dries and that's what they do mm-hmm. so they go back to having no money yep. but they go back to being alive and we end with yeah rory and emily are together riding around the hood on the motorcycle in love Jamie is kind of like a bit more reformed. He's sort of not really into weed as much. He always seems to be coaching a young basketball set of kids, kids basketball, which sounds a bit cheesy, but it looks fine. And we get a lovely uplifting sort of early 90s R&B style song over the, the, the credits. Just before the credits, though, we go back to the animated book, which says the end. But then a little cartoon hand comes out of the book. We were quite... in. Uh, the, le- the death of the Leprechaun was quite impressive. Warwick, um, under all the prosthetics of the makeup, but holding his breath in that cement as he goes down, and it's real quite uh, actually. Well, quite we should good. probably talk about that actually. Just so, put that death scene very quick. One thing that is consistent about all the Leprechaun movies is the makeup that they use on Warwick. And you estimated, <coughs> excuse me, you estimated it might be up to, up to six hours worth of. Yeah, I, that's me just guessing. Yeah, but it's a lot of work because he's got his full head to toe. He's got a wig, a hat teeth yeah you know, contact lenses face claws even the, the his feet in one scene it's a lot of work and uh he looks great and less is more as you said you know he's really his performance is restrained yeah and that's why this is better than the last one because the last one was too comical whereas this one he's yeah quite funny and but also uh, hopefully the director's been like no just directed like this to say like this and picking the right cast and yeah what they've done just a, is just a better film what they've done is they've turned a very mundane story that we've seen a million times about a couple of people trying to escape a situation they're in the hood mm-hmm. being poor yeah throwing in a weird thing like a monster yeah but they've made it slightly more elevated and i actually ended up giving this and this will be why oh, you know i'm giving it a thumbs up it's a five out of ten which i would give it a small thumbs up it's like uh, if you turned it on late night and you were just like, well, whatever, it does on telly. If it was Leprechaun 5 in the hood, you'd turn it off. Yeah. If it was this one, you'd probably just leave it. That's it's, how it's I'd say. Movie. Yeah. It's a better movie. Yeah, I'll give it a thumbs up. It's, wor- it's worth a watch. It's, uh, it's got some gags. Yeah. Now look, guys. Thanks for sticking with us for these Easter specials. Yep. There are two more Leprechaun movies. We are not going to be covering them Yay! next year. Yay! 
Uh, there's Leprechaun Origins, which, which is a WWE movie, uh, which I've seen. Not going to watch it. It's awful. And then there's another one after that called Leprechaun Returns, which is Celebrate. actually all right and links into the very first one because Jennifer Aniston has a very tiny cameo in it. But we aren't going to cover that one either because I think next year we need to move on to something fresh, spring-related and better. Yeah. That is our Leprechaun movies. Well, I'm sure filmmakers have been listening to us and they're going to go and make this big bunny sex movie. Bunny orgy. So that might be out next With Warwick Davis. Year. Oh, no. And Liam Neeson. It's weird. I'm the bunny. You're my buddy now. I'm the one that knocks. I want you to find my Easter eggs. <laughs> Get down there and have a look. <laughs> anyway, we're going to come back for the outro. We'll come back for the outro, guys. Happy Easter. And we're back again, ladies and gentlemen. We're back to say goodbye, happy Easter, and thank you. Thank you, thank you. So, there we go. At first episode of Men a Long Time, what a strange episode to do together. And that's why I said, I think later on, because we're banking and we're doing two today, so in the future you'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, that's what they're doing, you understand. Um, we could get into it a bit more later on and have a nicer uh, episode, which is less noisy from background noise. Yes, and I also, I tried my best to be positive, but even I struggled with Electrical 5 and you know me guys you know yeah, my heart just, tries just the fact with every that, film just the fact that it's your first ever oh, thumbs yeah. down I'm I don't sorry. even believe that's your first ever thumbs down I, I said I'm probably onto like 20, 25 yeah, I mean there might I might have given other thumbs downs in the past but yeah it is what it is but anyway talking of coming up next and we're recording later on today but in the future you guys will hear our next episodes let's talk about the next three upcoming episodes as always so episode 136 is going to be my birthday special yes we're celebrating that this evening together we are um it's my birthday in april so i've picked two movies and i'm a big slasher fan sorry sarah i'm a big slasher fan so i picked uh happy birthday to me from 1981 and i picked April Fool's Day from 1986. Uh, two slash movies, which I don't really hear many podcasts talk about too often. Uh, they get mentioned here and there, but not too often. So I'm really excited to talk about those two. Got some great plots and twists and turns in them. So that's episode 136. Yep. Uh, after that, episode 137, we had to switch some things around. But we are doing Hollow Man, Kevin Bacon, Invisible Junk. Yeah. Um, and we're doing The Invisible Man, uh, which is now 90 years old. 1933. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. And it's rated 15 out of the Universals that collection. You get like PGs. That one's 15. It's because he's a bit of a psycho kid. Got a Blu-ray. It's great. Oh, we'll bet that look fantastic. Yeah. Um, so that's what we'll be doing after that. And then for episode 138, it'll be a p- 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 patron pick, which uh, we're still. I'm in contact with the patron, uh, so we're just waiting for them to f- if to they've got two films and they're just deciding whether those two films are the two that we definitely go with so by next episode i should be able to confirm the two movies so yeah uh we're doing birthday then we're doing invisible and then for 138 it'll be a patron pick so stay tuned for lots more fun and games and that kind of stuff stuff. thank you to everybody that um helped out with our crowdfunder our kickstarter um We'll talk more about that in the next episode as well. As we talked about, we've we've well, we've pretty much wrapped principled photography on that. But we'll talk more in the next episode um, about that. Gav, thank you for bearing with us for this ride through Warwick Davis's discography. Mm. It's, mm. It's, it's, don't look at me with that look, death look. Mm. This is the scary thing about podcasting face to face. I'm like a um, Boris Karloff's mummy. Mm. Or well, Frankenstein, should I say? Ah. Uh, no, um, uh, yeah, they're fucking shit. Don't do it again. Do yeah, you know, I can't even remember much about the first Leprechaun movies now because the other ones have sort of melted my brain when it comes to. No, because I like ones. I like movies where we can delve into movies and have really good conversations. So sometimes go places where we don't know we're going and go like, "Wow, that's so good." And we even message each other the next day and say, "That looks such a great conversation." To go that. from the legacy and the changeling to left <laughs> corner five and six is a jump it's it a is. jump 
Anyway, that's that. So, thank you, everybody. I'll do some housekeeping, uh, and then we'll yep. we'll get out of here. Uh, quite literally, get out of here. So, as always, we have been the podcast on Haunted Hill. I don't know. I always do one like that. The podcast on Haunted Hill. Well, we're a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. You can find out more about them on legionpodcast.com. Uh, that's where you can find out not just us, but all the other amazing um, podcasts that are available through that network. Yeah, do check them out. Go to Facebook and type in Legion Podcasts or type in the podcast on Haunted Hill. There is a page for each, and each podcast has its own page too. Uh, our community, our Facebook page is where we're most active. Uh, we have a family that's been running for just under 10 years of amazing people, filmmakers, fans, listeners, supporters, family, friends. Just go there and chat chat about horror films, chat about anything you want. It's fantastic. Wherever you're listening to us now is where you can continue to listen to us, uh, including Spotify, YouTube, Podknife, Apple, and many, many, many other podcatchers. Uh, we're on Twitter, although we don't actively go on there very much, but it's at Haunted Podcast. And we're on Instagram, which is the podcast on Haunted Hill Insta. Uh, we talked about our crowdfunder, which is uh, through our production company, Deadbolt Films. Um, that's our website is deadboltfilms.com. Um, and Deadbolt Films is also on YouTube. Uh, we have a channel on there. Just type in Deadbolt Films. We're on Instagram under Deadbolt Films and Twitter at Deadbolt Films. That's where you can find out about Star Wars Sanctuary Moon and any of the other projects that we've been working on. Yeah, the, the website's going to get actually. We're going to update and uh, go to a different host for it and uh, update the uh, YouTube channel for when we premiere the Star Wars flick in yeah, two, three months. It's very exciting stuff. And finally, uh, if you want to support us in a different way, um, you can become a patron supporter. Um, patron supporters get to pick two movies for us to watch and review two of their favorite movies for their own private episode which everybody gets to listen to but you are the host you're the in charge of that episode as well as that when you first become a patron you get a t-shirt and of course you get a shout out on every episode you don't have to do it but if you want to become a patron supporter we really appreciate it the money goes towards keeping the uh, episodes coming along nicely it pays for equipment it pays for rental and purchasing of random films like fucking leprechaun six and other many things so thank you for that it, but no we do it thank does you. really help us um, it, it helps us with morale no we don't need the morale we would do, we've always said we'd do this if it's just me and dan listening to ourselves believe it or not there would be a but, cost involved if we didn't have patrons but it literally just keeps the show ticking over nicely and we really appreciate it so yeah if you want to do that just go to patreon and search for the podcast yeah, but we or absolutely love that you guys do that because it just makes us feel makes us all feel very special i forgot to mention we also have an email address which is the podcast on haunted hill uh, at hotmail.com i'm um, sorry at outlook.com that's our old one um as always though thank you to our patrons by name so thank you so much to Don Collier, Matthew Godley, Great. Jamie Jenkins, excellent, Kevin S. Fife, splendid, Sarah K. Whoopity woo, Rachel, whoop whoop, R. J. McCready, and Lex Boo. Oh, and uh, I didn't do the first one. Who was the first one? Uh, Don Collier. Yay! There we go. So everybody got a different style and a noise from Gav as well. Yeah, I was starting to go, what noise do I do now? You've, out, you've only got about four noises, haven't you? I've only got four noises. I'm like one of those sort of toys. It's only four, got four, noises. four noises. I'm yeah. four noise Gav, they called me at school. Four noise Gav. Yeah. <laughs> that was four, what's that? That's four, that was four noise, noise Gav. So there we go. Thank you everybody for sticking with us and listening and supporting and liking. Thank you to Warwick Davis for continuing to make these movies and for Ice T for appearing in them. Gav, it's a good night from Ice T's Afro. Af motherfucking T. It's got a slight lisp. Af, Af motherfucking T. Yes, it is, absolutely. It's good night from a, a, a larger lady being massaged <laughs> by some green up. spiky finger. And it's a good night from Warwick Davis uh, dying in a pit of wet concrete. It's good, good night from Liam. Liam, the leprechaun, Neeson. Come taste my eggs. Jesus. <laughs> Happy oh, Easter, people. One quick bit of trivia. Uh, at one point during the... Bit, bef- just before Leprechaun 5 was made, Warwick Davis and Tony Todd were approached to ask if they would want to be involved in Candyman versus Leprechaun. Both of them said, go fuck yourselves to the studio. So that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I don't blame them, quite frankly. 
Enjoy that chocolate oozing down your throat, people. Have uh, a lovely Easter, a lovely spring, and we'll be back for another episode in the future. Take care. Love you lots. Happy Easter. Bye. Thank you for listening to the podcast on Haunted Hill. We will be back again real soon.